Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We'll start in two minutes, as usual, two minutes past. Mm -hmm. Okay, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and good morning, afternoon, and evening to those who are joining us online. This is the third and final day of the Open Consultations and MAG meeting, and I'd like to thank all those who have stuck with us throughout, and um, we do realize that um, there are people that do have to leave and who have left because um, there's the ICANN meeting that's uh basically starting tomorrow and they have to fly back um and we also know that there are some people who do have to catch earlier flights this um afternoon so we've made a request to the chair and we'll see what he says <laughs> um but apart from that before we start uh as usual the meeting is being recorded there will be a summary report of the action points next week and um if you want to take the floor please you can raise your hand um in the zoom or you can use your flag and just put it up and the chair will um recognize you and then you can take the floor and when you take the floor can you please say your name slowly and then you can uh make your intervention uh, with that um I'll hand it over to our chair, Paul Mitchell, please. Good morning and thank you. Yesterday we had a good discussion of our approach to the variety of session types and rules around managing for conflict of interest in session planning and execution, and we made changes to provide for additional flexibility, so continuing on positive progress in this meeting. This morning, we'll continue the discussion of strategic vision for the future of the IGF, including our approach and relationship to the newly emerging processes, including the WISIS plus 20 GDC, and the relationship to the leadership panel that we've already done some work with so far this week. It's also an opportunity to review our approach to intersessional activities writ large, policy networks, best practice forums, et cetera, come up with recommendations, if any, on cooperation with the dynamic coalitions and the NRIs and the broader community. 
Uh, finally, we have the opportunity to review the work of the MAG groups themselves. And uh, we've been quite efficient over the past two days. And as uh, Chengatai mentioned, there are people who need to be in other places before the end of the day. So I hope we can continue the trend. We're scheduled to run to 6 p.m. today, uh, but there's no rule that requires us to do so. So let's be as efficient as we can. And uh, with that, the meeting is open for whoever wants to go first. Strategic vision and uh, for the future of the IGF. And we did have an intervention from Justin yesterday before he left. He did make an intervention and also Wyman from UNDESA as well mentioned a few um, topics. So Bruna, thank you. And then Chris. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. No, just um, taking the opportunity to ask about, um, because we had a discussion last year about submitting the messages to the GDC process. So maybe put this on the agenda and see whether we can still consider that or if we um, can re rehash it. Just because I know the leadership panel is also doing a submission somehow based in our messages, the IGF messages and so on. So I was I would just wanted to put this on the agenda and ask. Yes, that's, um, yes, we do have several parts of the IGF um, intending to, um submit the messages uh so we've had several discussions about this and um i don't know which is best uh one recommendation is that we pass things through the um chain that means that it goes through the under secretary general mr lee who will give a cover note and collect the inputs and then put them to the uh, tech invoice office. Uh, so that was one suggestion. And then uh, there was, it's not a competing suggestion, but there was also the thought that um, if we have many inputs, and I'm talking about the national and regional initiatives as well, that reference the messages that will actually make them be noticed more. Um, so those, are the things that we should take into uh, consideration. But yes, um, UNDES does offer to kind of coordinate the message, uh, the inputs as such. They, would, they, they, they will not be editing them because that was another question that was asked by the LP that whether or not they'll be, no, it's just a matter of collecting and putting a cover note and sending them. Maybe just a follow-up question. Time-wise, are we submitting through the process of the GDC, which deadline is like this, like the end of this month, or are we submitting it through other channels, the UN channels and, and not part of the actual consultation? Uh, we can, so yes. Um, there's two channels you can do it. You can submit it through the uh, actual GDC process. That means that it doesn't go through UNDESA. Or you can submit it through UNDESA. If you submit it through the channels, of course, you have to keep to that deadline with the UNDESA. Uh, there's some leeway for us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good morning, everyone. Chris Buckridge, Ag member. Um, I, so, well, we start off by saying I, I think the point you're making there, Chengatai, about um, references to the IGF messages in a wide range of inputs is a really important one. So, I think. You know, we, that's one, one I'd really want to drive home and, and sort of say to people who are submitting their own responses to the current con open consultation or participating in the deep dives. Um, yeah, please take the opportunity um, to, to make that reference. I think that's really important. Um, the other point I was going to make uh, was really just to say, as one of the co-facilitators of the um, co-chairs, what we're called, of the working group on strategy and strengthening the IGF. Um, that group's been doing a, a lot of work in this space, and it's probably useful to have a bit of update on that and, and where that's that's at. Um, and that's starting last year when we had the communication regarding the Global Digital Compact um, that 
the working group drafted and that the MAG approved and which is on the IGF website now, um, which really emphasized the importance or the, the need for the GDC process to be multi-stakeholder, to, um, respect, to respect the input and seek the input of the IGF communities, including the NRIs, including the intersessional work, um, and to really facilitate, do, do what, what was possible to, to facilitate um, that input. Um, so I think we've seen definitely definite progress in relation to that. I think you know we're, this, this was a communication that went out before the co-facilitators were in place, before they laid out the different ways that they were going to be consulting. So I think that's something very welcome and in line with um, what we were proposing. Um, there was also um, significant significant extensions to the deadline of the consultation that the Office of the Tech Envoy um, laid out, and that was something we were also we're concerned about the the tight deadline there. Um, I'm not sure if that's if there how much flexibility there still is in that, but I think we still have a fairly long way to go before we get to um, the negotiation. So I think there's certainly, well, hopefully, possibility for fe flexibility in that re regard as well. Um, in relation to the WISIS plus twenty, the working group on strategy and strengthening the IGF has also started doing some work on a. Uh, um, a draft IGF WISIS plus 20 action plan. Um, and so this is very much work in progress. Uh, there have been some really great inputs um, from a lot of members of the working group. Um, Mark Cavell particularly has, has really helped frame the initial draft. So thank you to Mark. Um, there's a, a, I think we have eight different objectives uh, there that we're sort of circling and, and drafting and coming to agree on. And we're currently fleshing out some suggested strategies or ways to achieve those objectives. Um, I think two points that that were sort of reached consensus quite early on. One was the importance of using IGF 2023 to um, socialize the importance of the WISIS plus 20 to get people engaged and understanding the significance of this event, the timelines involved, so the need to get involved now, even though the event itself um, has a 2025 date attached, um, and to begin talking about the best way to engage. Um, and I think from the discussions we've had here this week, and we'll have more discussions, I assume, about the thematic tracks and the high-level sessions, um, but I certainly heard um, a, a, quite a strong move for at least the main session discussion of these processes and of their significance um, I think that would fit in very well with the working group working group strategies plan there. The second um, activity, and this perhaps fits into the, the broader question of our sort of mag modalities, um, was to to be pulling together a relatively comprehensive list of the IGF's achievements and the achievements of the IGF community in evolving the IGF, um, particularly since the WISIS Plus 10 and in response to the, the outputs of that WISIS Plus 10 review and subsequent um, activities. So including up to and including the expert group meeting that took place last year. Um, yeah, we, I, we need to look at how best to do that and how best to sort of format that and where it could be um, input. I think sort of the, there's been discussion of the need to coordinate a little with the CSTD in that regard to make sure that this information goes in via via that channel to the sort of formal WISIS plus 20 um, preparation process. Uh, so if, if we, as a group, wanted to discuss a bit how we might do that today, but otherwise the working group strategy is certainly a venue where we'll continue to discuss that and look at the best ways to do that. Um, so I guess finally, I would just encourage any MAG members and any other, it's not just MAG members, so also any other interested parties to join the um, work group strategy discussions um, if you have an interest in this area. And I'll post the link for the page in the Zoom chat. Thanks. Thanks, Chris. Maria Leza. Thank you, uh, Maria Zulpira, um, observer. Um, I just wanted to uh, to inform everyone that uh, um, the there is a resolution of our general conference um, that uh, requests uh, UNESCO to uh, to, to provide a report on the organization's implementation of the WISIS uh, um, um, 
uh, outcomes and how the vision of the WIS is as a people-centered, inclusive, development-oriented society can best be fulfilled. And that should be taking into account, uh, you know, the current technological uh, realities and challenges that we face and so on, and a draft resolution. Uh, for uh, the organization's roadmap, you know, for UNESCO's roadmap uh, towards that, uh, the 20 year review, you know, the WISIS plus 20 uh, until 2025. 20, uh, so, um, you know, I just wanted to say that, uh, you know, uh, one of the things that we intend to do is carry out a few consultations on, on, uh, on uh, um, the uh, the different ways in which you know this roadmap can be put together, and what should be part of this roadmap, and invite the MAC to be part of this uh, of, of this conversation as well. Uh, just in terms of timeline, uh, so that you know, it this has to be sent to our general conference this year, the forty second general conference of UNESCO, which takes place in October, and so of course it has to be submitted at least uh, uh, two uh, two months in advance. Uh, therefore, we should have you know. Uh, um, so I'm saying by, you know, by late August. So um, uh, this is, uh, you know, a shorter, you know, uh, timeline, but uh, but it's a good conversation and we could create an interface between the working group on strategy and this and this uh, uh, particular element so that we can, you know, come together on some ideas on, on how to take it forward. And just, uh, you know, because UNESCO as the, uh, you know, UNESCO carries out the largest number of, uh, of uh, action lines as, as lead facilitator of any other agency. So um, our, our member states want to, you know, to have us uh, uh, provide uh, this kind of information uh, to them. So to, to, for, the, for the process. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Chris, uh, that's okay. What uh, Maria Leza was saying that you can coordinate with the working group. Yes. And also, I just wanted to ask uh, for the working group, do they envision doing anything for this, for the CSTD intersessional that's happening um, end of this month, I think it is? We're not quite that organized, unfortunately. No, mm -hmm. I, there, there's not any current plans. Um, it, it, yeah, at the end of this month. So, I mean, there, there would be perhaps a possibility um, to present um as, as a short input on the interest of, of the, the mag and the work going on um i don't think we have anything too substantive at this point but it would certainly be um if, if there's a chance to note to the cstd that the igf 2023 will be having these discussions and will be um making efforts to increase engagement with the WISIS plus 20 preparation process I, that could well that could be quite useful um, the MAG chair is actually presenting, um, oh. is on a panel at the CSTD, so maybe you can Wonderful. coordinate a little bit and see. We'll um, make sure we get some talking there. points to you. Yeah. <laughs> Elisa, please. Thank you. Um, good morning, all, and good evening, afternoon uh, for those online. Um, this is Elisa Heber for the record. Um, I um, I would also want to propose um, maybe for um, for next time for the, for keeping updates regularly, um, if we could have a, um, an update from Sweden and Rwanda on the GDC process um, during the next open consultations here. Um, well, it will be in Geneva then. Um, and maybe if the tech envoy could also, or the tech envoy office could provide an update on where they are uh, standing. I think it would be very useful. So for the preparation of a main session, um, if we if we would want to have one on 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 the GDC and on the WISIS, I think it it would be very very beneficial. And maybe maybe well to make it cross cutting, even ask if the chair of the CSTD could um, report back. Um, I think yeah, that would be useful. Thanks. Um, no, thank you. Um, as you're aware, we did have the uh, facilitators here on Tuesday afternoon, but we will definitely um, give them a um, invitation to come um, for June. And they are definitely coming for the IGF in uh, in Kyoto. They'll definitely be there. But of course, yes, uh, regular updates is good. And then unfortunately for the tech envoy, I think they just so wrapped up in the current um, business and they're also um, reformulating the office so they couldn't attend uh, this meeting but 
we'll see, hopefully we'll see them in June as well. Yeah. Thanks, Bruna. Thanks. Um, no, yeah, just following up on Anissa's suggestion. So maybe in the next consultation, we can have this a similar session about the processes as well, just so we can keep like doing this conversation until the IGF understanding that there is some sort of a consensus that we do have, do we, that we do want to have some focus on that. Um, I know Amandeep is, is like the, the tech invoice, like under like some formulation, but it would be interesting to have him in Geneva if he can, or anyone from his office um, in, in July or or June, whenever the, the second translation is happening. But um, I, I was also going to suggest um, that maybe we could take some time to think whether we already have any ideas for what could be the main session on the processes for the IGF. Because I think that maybe having a conversation between the chair of the CSTD, somebody representing the WISIS process, the tech envoy office, and the co-facilitators, plus the IGF, it would be an interesting conversation to have, just so we will be able to look forward and see how all of this process, they integrate itself, what could be overlapping each other, how can we move forward, and what's the relevance of the multi-stakeholder participation in all of that. So um, maybe if we have this vision for the main session, as soon as we can, it's kind of the conversation we can continue to have with all of these players until the IGF happens and also including the leadership panel that I'm forgetting about. So just trying now, right? So I'm not forgetting in general, but just bringing these ideas um, to the table because I think it's gonna be super important. And also because um, having the co-facilitators in July Will be important because it's past um, the contribution phase and hopefully there's going to be some more clarity about the process and the issues paper and it's going to be after the deep dives and so on so maybe they can also can also weigh in on some of our tracks and and the IGF tracks in general if we're keeping this alignment and and bringing more contribution to the debate so that's it thank you No, thank you very much. And those are excellent ideas. Yes, we should um, follow that suggestion as a starting point and see what we can do for the meeting. Um, we will be, cons we usually, no, I don't say we will be because I don't want to make it that as a set thing, but yes, we will be constructing the um, main sessions um, working groups in June, but there's no reason why we can't, we, we can't start doing it beforehand in, in any case. But yeah. Yeah, I would like to support very much the ideas of uh, Bruna, and um, I would like to say the earlier we have visibility, I think we should place such a session very early into the IGF days in order to have, uh, if we have higher representation that usually do not stay to the end that we have them at, uh, at present at this session. So I would say preferably maybe on day one, uh, that would be best. I also would like to think that if we're going to have like um, a mag meetings with uh, the different players in uh, June, July, whatever, I think we should maybe have before the IGF some a plan to, to have a wider IGF community, maybe through a uh, publicly available consultation or something where those issues are discussed, please, so that we it's not something that just the mag is, is uh, is discussing, but I mean, the wider community is discussing within um, um, uh, let let me say it uh, under the uh, organization uh, of the IGF or under the umbrella of the IGF somewhere just before we get to uh, the IGF in Kyoto. Thank you. Just just to respond to Christine's idea, yeah. Um, so something like maybe a virtual session. I mean, yeah. Obviously, the working group strategy sessions are open to anyone, but maybe. This could be a different thing and i think the working group strategy could even be sort of the driving force behind it and we could make a sort of more widely publicized advertised um session on on these processes and on the what the igf will be doing in relation to them and yeah I, definitely it seems like a good idea to me so, so, so just to say where this is coming from, I mean, it's it's because we've seen the processes actually go into, you know, statements, at least the GDC like, was like that, a statement, and then statement after that. I would like to see some of what's happening uh, in terms of dynamics of discussion within the IGF take place also around those topics, um, not just uh, the formal um, um, member state format.
Anyone else have ideas? I have Titi. Titi. So thank you for giving me the floor. I mean, uh, about the IGF um, evolution, about the involvement of the IGF in the in the GDC, I think uh, it's important, I mean, to use the IGF as a platform for, for this uh, public consultation, but it's also important um, to try to involve more the results of the intersectional activity on the GDC commitment. As um, working group strategies, we start a very important exercise for the roadmap for digital cooperation. We we had a mapping exercise, trying to map the lines of the road up with the, the main discussion of IGF. So I think uh, this could be a useful uh, exercise that could be also repeated for the GDC in order to to I mean, I mean address and involve, include more the results of the IGF in the in the GDC and. Um, Another point that I want to arise is um, trying to, because the, the working group strategies is trying to, I mean, uh, create a link between the, the, the MAG and also the tech envoy office. And we had a very good link, I mean, in the past, while some now sometimes it's, uh, it's difficult because uh, the tech envoy office is a small office. So maybe the secretariat could have to, to F to create a more strength link between the two offices in order to support the MAG on, on this uh, process. So thank you. Thank you. And for the consultation, yes, I mean, we can think about an online one. Uh, you, you think it would interfere if we have it on the open consultation day, right? You want it separate? I, I, I mean, I think what, I was getting from Christine's initial idea and was was sort of something more to set the scene. So yeah, ahead of the, the open consultation day, then the open consultation day itself can be a bit, I mean, I will obviously have um, discussions to be had on that day regarding the upcoming IGF. Um, so I, I, yeah, I wouldn't want to crowd too much or place too much ambition in what we can squeeze into that single open consultation day. So, um, but I, I think like sort of one hour, 90 minute, um, a virtual session in you know the weeks ahead of that would perhaps be quite quite useful oh hey online thank you <clears throat> thank you Chengatai. um not sure uh, whether this is the right time but i see some some traction in in the chat uh, on the the Two proposals we, we've been floating uh, this week, uh, both with the MAC and the leadership panel, and uh, I think it's it's of course good to to talk to to the co facilitators to to talk to to the tech envoy, but uh, I feel that the the IGF uh, in uh, in this intention of uh, developing itself into an IGF plus, uh, a more uh, proactive and more action oriented uh, committee uh, could very well uh, make proposals for action in um, with uh, the co-facilitators who are really running the process. The Tekken boy is uh, just the secretariat of, of that process. And uh, I would really suggest that uh, as soon as possible and uh, at the latest in um, in the next uh, meeting of uh, of the of the mag uh, physically in geneva that uh, the the igf comes forward and proposes that uh, the igf uh, convenes a multi stakeholder drafting group that would assist or would uh, uh, support the co-facilitators in preparing a draft of the global digital compact. I think we have the people, we have the means, we have the expertise, we have a lot of work done, uh, especially also in the Addis meeting. And uh, this would be a very concrete contribution to, to the process. And at least uh, we we should try this out i think if we want to have a, an influence on uh, what is to be included in the global digital compact and if we want to show 
how the multi-stakeholder model uh, embodied in the IGF is able to uh, contribute to, to such an international process. And uh, I feel the, the co-facilitators are open to, to hearing ideas. So uh, we should really address them directly because as said, they are the ones who, who are running the process and have a certain leeway in being also creative and innovative how to how to handle things um, who can uh, prepare this i think the the working group on uh, strategy can prepare a concept on how this could be done uh, based on uh, the igf multi stakeholder community and then uh, be it uh, uh, the leadership panel chair vince Cerf, or be it uh, Paul Mitchell or both of them could trans, uh, translate this or uh, transfer this proposal to the co-facilitators as soon as possible. And then we could have the, a discussion with them uh, virtually or physically uh, later on, but uh, as soon as possible, I think, so that we don't lose time with uh, uh, with uh, this proposal. Um, the alternative, I think, is that uh, the consultations go on in New York, that uh, they um, adopt this form of a lineup of uh, speeches, which are really disconnected, which are not structured and which uh, most of the time also because they are limited in time to three minutes usually they don't uh, go be beyond the surface and they uh, stay at a very different level of uh, of depth of depth and expertise of what we have witnessed in the igf discussions so far and in such a framework of consultations as we are witnessing so far the IGF voice is not being really heard and uh, if we just uh, keep on asking uh, the tech envoy office or the co-facilitators at a distance to consult the IGF uh, I don't think we will make a difference but if we come forward with uh, such a proposal I think we, we really can change things. We can make a difference. So uh, I leave it by that. You know, there's uh, another proposal which uh, has to do with the IGF for the follow-up and evaluation of the future Global Digital Compact. But that's uh, not as uh, uh, time uh, relevant now as uh, this other one. Thank you. Thank you. That's some good concrete ideas. And we'll also, I'll also, I'm, I'm not putting women on the spot right now, but we'll also um, consult with New York to see if um, what's the best way to go about this as well, if they have any advice for us in, in doing this. Thank you. Um, so, if I understood Jorge correctly, he, he's like um, suggesting that the MAC would be part to help Sweden and Rwanda to draft the text for the GDC. And well, if we all really like this idea, then I think maybe an official letter sent by our MAC chair Paul to uh, Sweden and Rwanda would would be a very useful way. But yeah, um, uh, maybe to temperature here uh, how do people feel about this do we want to get that involved or how well just so silence means that everybody thinks it's brilliant and we should go for it really lined up um, didn't think so. Let's see who's at the back. I'd Wyman. just like to hear what Wyman has to say. Yeah. Um, even that's a Wyman box. 
Um, yeah, thanks. Um, I, I think there are actually very forthcoming uh, proposals and also very proactive uh, initiatives on the part of the MAC. Um, as Hoi uh, rightly pointed out, the tech envoy is the secretariat to the GDC process. Um, just like the IGF uh, with UNDESA, we are the secretariat to the IGF and the MAC. Um, the, the GTC is multi-stakeholder. End of the day, um, there will still be an intergovernmental negotiation. So I would, uh, I, I, I think all these ideas are welcome to put on board. I mean, I, I think the Tech Envoy Office uh, would, would, uh, would welcome such ideas, um, but I'm not sure if they could entirely take that on board, given that there must be a plan uh, as, as of now. Uh, about the drafting process. So I would like to um, ask the MEC to consider more of the substance rather than process-oriented issues, still to focus on what best the IGF could highlight uh, to be included in the GDC rather than process, because I think process is, is outside the, I would say, the, 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 the legitimation of, of, of this group here. So that, that's, that, that's the first point. On the second point, on VCs plus 20, I think everyone uh, would not disagree that the GDC will be connected, should be connected to VCs plus 20. But exactly how it is going to be like, we still do not know. But, I, uh, but the idea of having a focus, like a main session on VCs plus 20 is again very welcome. And I would suggest to, to say again, to focus more on the, substance rather than process. Um, there are other para process, um, like obviously CSTD, uh, they are actually the, um, the CSTD is actually coordinating the, or, or putting together the SG reports on the follow-up to the action lines. Likewise, ITU area have the resist forum. And of course, uh, there's also the, um, all the upcoming consultation by UNESCO uh, as we have from, Arizona. So, uh, again, I, I think for, for VCs plus 20, I would say that there could be more, um, we can actually focus a little more because uh, it will be, um, that's where DESA will also be involved in the New York part, given that there will be a Geneva process as well, as all of you know. So, the, I, 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 I believe that the, to think more about, I think, first of all, I'd just like to highlight again that for this MAC and for the remaining of the day, to focus more about IGF 2023, the Kyoto IGF. Uh, I think all the other ideas, um, I'm sure the secretary will take notes and then to share with the respective officers, um, but focusing on what I, the, uh, the value of Kyoto IGF, that will be, that will be very good because not to, not to uh, I think all of you heard that there will be a ministerial events um, that will be in September in the GA then there will still be a follow-up process until uh, a year later where we have the summit of the future. Um, I, I am not giving any, any concrete suggestion here, but I just like to point uh, to say that the focus of this MAC meeting uh, should perhaps still be on the Kyoto IGF, especially uh, we are uh, having the privilege of the co-chair from the host country here. Thank you. Thank you, that's a good reminder. Um, Bruna and then Chris. Thanks. Um, no, just about the process itself. I mean, I guess the whole rationale behind us asking for a main session or asking for this more focused um, contribution to the consultation and so on is because a lot of the, the GDC is a process that talks about a lot of substance, a lot of content. And in, in each of the consultations, like the one in Geneva, as opposed to the one that was hosted in Mexico, they each talk about different topics. But one thing that's becoming somehow clearer is that um, the IGF process is, is the one that is last talked about. So there's a lot of fuss about content moderation, disinformation, and a lot of topics surrounding the internet. But the IGF process would deserve some, some more attention since there is a chance of like some overlap or even influence in, in what we're doing. So that's the general rationale behind us asking for a contribution. And I understand the limitations with regards to 
um, whether or not we should um, ask to be part of the process. And I agree with you, I mean, that we could focus on the, on the substance a little bit more, but at the same time, the request, the suggestion from Jorge maybe is something that could help bring more legitimacy to the process. So I'm not saying adding an extra layer, but maybe um, the co-facilitators would like to consider a multi-stakeholder group to review whatever it is, one of the issues paper or one of the later phases of the process um, outputs. And this helps bring more legitimacy. This is something that um, maybe they would be interested in and, and not, I mean, I'm not saying it's something we should decide now, but one of the requests um, also thinking that um, in the end of the day, it is indeed something that will be negotiated by member states, but it's also something that um, to some extent is multi-stakeholder. So that's kind of the rationale behind it. Um, yeah, so my, my idea would, would be just that like, so maybe we could consider, and this is probably a conversation with the member states about um, some sort of a multi-stakeholder review or like a later phase consultation of one of the inputs paper or anything of the sort once we have things more figured out. Because I feel like right now everybody's talking about so many things and the IGF is the one that's last talked about. So it would be interesting to have this very kind of like small selected part of the process dedicated to this forum and how can it move forward in the, in the whole scenario. So that's it, thank you. Thank you, Chris. Um, so, I, yeah, I'm, I'm looking and thinking about Jorge's suggestion there. Um, I, I think we should be very clear that we're, we, I think, I mean, I certainly take the point that this will be a, a member state agreed document. I think we're quite explicitly at this stage, at least talking about the preparatory process that leads into the negotiation. And I, I'm not sure what the scope for a multi-stakeholder negotiation will be. I, it would be great if that could happen, but I, I think there is um, a lot of uh, uh, resistance to that among member states. Um, but if there is a chance to make the sort of the initial first draft, a multi-stakeholder document that as, as Bruno says, I think could, could give it some additional legitimacy and, and strength. I, I take the point that it's important to focus on substance rather than just the the process. But I, I mean, I think we have substance in terms of the IGF 2022 messages. Um, that's that's important substance that really directly engages with the themes laid out by the Secretary General for this Global Digital Compact. I think we also have a real obligation as the MAG, well, certainly as last year's MAG, that took a decision to shape the IGF in response to those themes, in response to the call for, an, for a GDC. We have an obligation to ensure that having done that, we then take that through to the next stage of actually having those outputs respected and understood and seen and, and taken into account. Um, so I, I, I absolutely agree, we should also be focusing on IGF 2023. There is a lot of work to do in ensuring that that is a successful event. And I think it will also if I understand the timeline correctly, perhaps it's a little optimistic, but we'll also have outputs that can feed into the, the initial draft of a GDC and hopefully we can feed into the negotiation that will follow that. Um, but it, it absolutely is something that I feel the MAG needs to do and, and the leadership panel, really the IGF, the institutions of the IGF need to do to follow through and not just sort of drop the ball and say, okay, well, we're we shaped our IGF 2022 around the GDC. We produced the outputs, boom, it's out there. Let's hope that sticks to the wall. Um, I think we need to take a little bit more ownership and responsibility for, you know, shaping the, the preeminent um, global discussion of internet governance around this document that the, the Secretary General has proposed. Um, having done that, we need to be serious about making sure that that's also taken into account and, and a, a part of that process. So I, I think there's a lot to be done. There's a lot of uncertainty. I don't know what the um, response of the co-facilitators would be, but I do think it makes sense. And I think we can also point to successful instances of this in the past. And the, the Net Mundial is obviously the example that's pointed to very often. Um, and I think if, if we can sort of reference that and, and shape a proposal to the co-facilitators that um, is is clearly based on um, 
practices that have worked in the past, that seems like a useful thing to do. Thank you. Other interventions? I think Jorge has one. Oh, Jorge? Yeah. Uh, thank you for, for letting me come back. Uh, just to just to clarify that uh, the the process uh, for the GDC is uh, led is run by the core facilitators uh, who are, who have been entrusted to, to do this by the president of the. UNGA or the General Assembly of the uh, United Nations. The Secretariat, of course, has a role, but it's a, it's a subservient uh, role. It's a, it's a role to help the co-facilitators in doing their work. And the guiding um, a document for the co-facilitators is, the, is uh, amongst other things, the ICT for D resolution that was adopted by the UNGA in December. And this says that the process towards the global digital compact has to be open and inclusive and uh, include uh, all stakeholders and take into account what fora like the IGF have been working on. So I think that's pretty general. At the same time, it offers a lot of possibilities. And uh, uh, getting back to, to the origins of the IGF, uh, I think we have to be bold and uh, have to be proactive, forward-looking, and uh, make proposals and not wait for being included in uh, consultations uh, as prepared by the secretariats of, uh, of these processes. So uh, I think we, we should really go forward. This, uh, uh, the IGF is an expression of the global multi-stakeholder community. It's, uh, it's much beyond an advisory body or something like that. It's really the forum of the, the global multi-stakeholder community. And uh, we, we should be bold in, in making proposals and being uh, relevant. And of course, process is uh, always very important. We know it very well here. And uh, without ownership of the process by the multi-stakeholder community, uh, we will just have a very intergovernmental uh, document at the end of the road. And I don't think that's our intention here, but uh, of course the, the intergovernment process won't come to us to, to say, hey, come and participate here. That may uh, happen, but we, we also have to be proactive. And at least uh, that's the intention of uh, the two uh, suggestions uh, we've been making during these days. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Wei Min. Thank you, Chen. Um, yes, uh, Ho Hei, um, uh, we uh, hear that you have reiterated the points. And yes, I do support that the IGF should be the first to, 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 to really showcase the multi-stakeholder uh, and work that is that is working in action um, for the past 18 years. Um, I, I just shared the link uh, on the GDC deep dive uh, process, the eight teams. So one, one practical way is that to see, uh, first of all, the IGF 2022 messages, 2021, and then what we heard from the leadership panel uh, on, on, uh, on, on shipping the IGF messages to be shared to the GDC is already underway, but it helped if the IGF is represented at each of these eight sessions. Um, interestingly, and some of you would agree that uh, there are many overlapping uh, issues. For instance, there's one dedicated just on internet governance. Um, as I said earlier, I believe there is a drafting process plan 
So the idea of the what has been discussed here can be shared with the tech envoy, can be shared with the co-facilitator. I just like to, to, to say in my own personal perspective here, I'm not sure whether that will be taken on board. Uh, however, I think the practical approach here is that for IGF to, to be represented at these eight thematic sessions, including with specific written inputs, um, concise inputs, but not just to get you know, the GDC or just get them to refer to the link of the IGF messages. So what, what this eight thematic dive means to IGF and as advised by the MAC, I think there'll be a practical approach. Thank you. Um, just, uh, I think that's a good suggestion. I mean, um, and I, I think I, I want to just draw a connection back to a couple of days ago. Um, one of the, the things that the leadership panel is working on and that I think we all agreed we should make sure it's, it's joint work between the MAG and the leadership panel is more crisp, um, concise versions of the messages that came out of IGF 22, which can be of use to the leadership panel in their ambassadorial um, role. I, I think those messages would also be very well suited to this um, open consultation format. So I'm not, I'm not sure that should be the extent of it, but I think certainly if we can prioritize working with the leadership panel to develop those more concise versions of the messages and have them ready for those deep dive sessions um, as input from the IGF community. And I think we should agree sort of as the MAG um, today or soon, how what the most appropriate way to deliver those would be. Um, so whether it's having the MAG chair input them during the session itself, uh, that might be a, an appropriate way. Um, but yeah, no, so I think we have some practical um, steps that we're already going to do that can very much aid us in this. Thank you. Oh. I think it's here, I think Paul. Um, being an observer of Altenatris, and I've been observing and participating in the GDC process so far from the Dynamic Coalition's point of view, um, I noticed two main things, I think. First is that People are looking at the IGF to come up with something concrete. I think that that is the message that has been shared broadly. The second is that if I look at the more national regional processes I'm involved with, it's very hard to get input basically to the GDC. And in some cases that is because organizations want to present themselves. And if you are in the meetings with the co-facilitators, you can see people sending, sending, sending it all from an individual point of view of their own organization. And is that going to be effective? I'm not really certain. So this could be a role, and I've heard you I'm in quite clearly uh, on, on this, but is there a role for the IGF to magnify these individual messages? But that also means that you have to be able to receive them. But it is, an, I think, an ambitious plan that Jorge is uh, presenting. And as an observer, I sort of support it because that would magnify the role of the IGF, make it more important, and make sure that we are totally noticed by the time the WISIS 20 comes along. And this is a great opportunity for us to do so. So let me, let me end there. Thank you. Thank you, Maria Liz. Thank you, uh, Maria Oscarita, UNESCO observer. Um, just want to kind of draw the the um, similarities and differences between the uh, the principles uh, that are currently proposed for the GDC and the and the, and the ones that we already have uh, endorsed by member states of uh, by 193 member states of UNESCO uh, for the Rome, uh, which is human rights, openness, accessibility, multi stakeholder participation and governance. Um, so. Um, the, the difference, I think, between those two is that uh, um, first, one of those, you know, uh, the Rome, they already talk about how governance should be should be you know, carried out for, for um, digital ecosystems, internet specifically. And the other is that it, it represents a process that actually has not only the principles, you know, but but a series of indicators that allow uh, for monitoring and measuring whether these principles are being upheld and if they are being upheld, you know, uh, what is the distance that exists between, you know, uh, uh, what is the current status in a particular, you know, uh, uh, 
environment, national space or whatever. Um, and uh, the ideal, you know, let's say, uh, uh, of, of that being upheld. So uh, it yields policy recommendations that then allows, you know, for engagement and, uh, and uh, participation in, in terms of advocacy, in terms of support implementation and so on. And, um, you know, what I think is that, uh, you know, the GDC eventually will need some type of process like that. Um, you know, just to, not to stay in the scope of commitments, but actually to look at how these commitments are going to be implemented and uh, whether they they are being uptaken or not, and what should be you know uh, uh, done and prioritized in, in those terms. Um, so we uh, certainly offer you know the Rome as a as a kind of a model of an idea of uh, how uh, uh, the GDC eventually you know, can be contributed. But for the IGF. I think it's really important that, that it contributes to this discussion as bringing in the value of most stakeholders uh, to all these issues that have been discussed because it, it has a tremendous value. It has a foresighting you know, a, a, um, element in identifying critical issues that, uh, that uh, are you know, emerging in terms of, uh, of internet development and digital development. Uh, it actually has, you know, this uh, uh, this opportunity for a collaborative collegial debate on around those issues that, uh, you know, that enables uh, some consensus to emerge and, uh, and actually, actually draws together the various groups that need to uh, engage in order for, you know, uh, um, digital ecosystems to really, you know, be working for sustainable development. So I think that at least in that regard, in terms of the value of multi-stakeholderism, there should be a, con you know, a contribution uh, of, uh, of the IGF to this process so that it can really talk about not only what the substantive commitments should be in terms of, uh, or, you know, substantive principles and commitments should be, but also the governance uh, uh, element should, should bring. You know, but that's uh, a kind of a personal, uh, um, you know, observation in that. Thank you. Thank you. Right in. Um, yeah, I, I just like to echo what um, Chris mentioned about uh, giving Crips uh, messages. Um, the I I I believe the GTC, both the course facilitators supported by the Tech Envoy, they are actually looking at first messaging. Um, that could be similar to what we have come up with uh, IGF 2022 or the Addis Ababa messaging. The other will be more action-oriented um, action oriented approaches. Like for instance, um, um, some of those issues, whether is it the right time to really to have international norms and then what will be the multi-stakeholder uh, role in setting the in the in the in, in the uh, global norms. Um, this is also to add on to what uh, Marisa uh, mentioned about the multi-stakeholder approach. So to go beyond just uh, repeating the principles, which um, most, if not all, is 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 actually on on the table, but to say what will be the uh, specific action-oriented norms regulations need not be need not be prescriptive in terms of already saying like like the what should be done uh, but sorry it should be to be clear about to say what should be done but not to say that who to do it in terms of like the institutional arrangement but if there's a need for a new institutional arrangement or even a global institution to talk about certain certain norms and standards like for instance AI regulation should that be an international body so this is actually has been discussed so that will be the kind of uh, uh, more forward-looking uh, ideas and which is the vision behind the Secretary General when he first proposed that we should have a global digital compact. So, so again, just, just in short, uh, the messaging to talk about what it should be further highlighted and then second is the action-oriented items. Thank you. Thank you. Chris, is that right? Anyone else want to come in on this topic? Yeah. 
Is that a discussion on whether or not to make an intervention or? I'm sorry, I think there was a it was a little discussion of so where are we actually at um, in terms of next steps and and processes. Um, uh, well, to give a very um, off the top of my head summary, I, I mean I think the there's obviously a, a practical work item on working with the leadership panel on um, the the crisp messages. I think there's a a work item here of contacting and communicating with the co-facilitators on to, to at least open the discussion as to whether they'd be receptive to this kind of a, a multi-stakeholder drafting um, proposal idea. Um, and we have to find the right way of doing that, right? Yeah, absolutely. That, that's, that's as I say, a, a sort of a work item, but one that I don't think we're ready to jump into today or tomorrow, um, but, but that's perhaps something I guess, and, and that, yeah, how do we delegate this? And so maybe that's something the working group strategy would be um, discussing more, although perhaps it, it also just makes sense to use the MAG public list um, to have that discussion and, and work this out amongst ourselves. Um, that, that, those are the two, I guess, that I- Main session. I, oh, and the main session, obviously, yeah, sorry. The formulation. Main session, the conversation on the next consultation with the co-facilitators in the tech and Roy. And yes. Not just that, but also how are we engaging on the specific internet governance deep dive on the 13th of April? Yeah, yeah. Yes. And planning the on yes, planning the online thing just before the open consultations. And then also there was something about the strategy group connecting with Maria Leza. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we got those. <laughs> okay. I guess we can go to the next um, segment. We can find our notes. Switching topics, we're going to uh, take a look at the intersessional stuff and um, get ourselves accustomed, acclimatized to what's been going on. So we'd like to open up the floor for that. Uh, could I just nominate an update on the best practice forums and have a... Uh... You may. If we have any input, I know we just we did part of this online when we had the best practice forums and the policy networks um, charted, and um, I don't know if we want updates now. And I think we can if anything has been done. Um, if we can, I can just pick audience on the. Um, AI, if anything has been done yet, we still have not, oh, Alisa, yes. Um, we are in the process of, as far as updates, as far as the uh, secretariat is concerned, that we need to get the consultants. And we are in the process of getting that process so that we can advertise um, for the consultants and then have the consultants assigned to the best practice forums and the policy networks. Um, while that has been done, I do hope that there will be some discussion, the groups and the mailing lists are becoming active on that part, but the consultants are, we're just going through the pipeline. So, Alice, yes. Yeah, thank you, Chengatai. Um, this is Alisa. Um, just to be clear, are we like moving to 5.30 on the agenda? Um, what 
we we have discussed as far as um, the chair and I can see is that we have discussed the strategic vision. We've discussed the WSIS plus 20, and we have uh, discussed um, those parts underneath that agenda. But please correct us if we should have further discussions under that topic. If not, then we can do that and then do some any other businesses because uh, some people did uh, approach us with uh, other suggestions. Um, so yes, uh, as a matter of fact, we're just skipping that because it seems that we had summarized and, but we're open. Yeah. Um, yeah, so to, to what extent should we already have some clarity about which main sessions we should be looking towards preparing or is that sorry for my ignorance but it, oh no no that's should, fine or should the, that be in, in, in the second open consultation yes the main sessions are usually discussed in the second open consultations but as um, Bruna did say that there was a more or less solid basis for the discussion on the uh, WSIS plus 20 session that um, you were talking about. There's no reason why it you cannot start that session now just to make sure that it is strong. But um, uh, the tradition is that, yes, we do it in June, but we don't have to follow tradition all the time. No. OK, and then one more follow up question. Um, so we've been mentioning it a couple of times uh, that we could have liaisons to the the separate um kind of working groups of the leadership panel um is it do we already want to appoint people in this meeting or will that or will, will we take that well offline or online just as you want to see it on the mailing list and decide there um we can take it here because this mag meeting is an official mag meeting we have people here and we have people online who are not supposed to be here so uh, uh, who can't make it here and as a matter of efficiency <laughs> i think it is it may be prudent to uh see if we can appoint the liaisons here because the work is going on and do we want to wait that period so if you want to, we can start discussing that. Mm -hmm. Do we want to, okay, who does, who does not want to discuss it here and want to, wants to discuss it online? Again, this meeting is for you. So yeah, if you want to do it now, we can. Or if you want to, if you think that it's fairer to do it online, we can do that too. Let's do it now. At least like have a, at least a, a, some sort of a show of hands, whether there would be volunteers for these groups and how could be the relationship between the two groups because we don't also don't want to overstep you paul you, you we know you're our liaison with the lp as well so it would be good to have a good discussion on this and how can we work together sure well i'm open so and the mics are here this is your opportunity to to make the case um just for practicality could we maybe have the 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 groups on the screen so everybody can see it yes uh, i just asked for that oh. <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, yeah yeah we're we're just getting ready um the options for the group i mean for the main group of course that's paul so that's fine but then there's groups a to d and that's the ones that we are looking at yeah So, and just while that's happening, and this is a, just a throwing back to the previous um, agenda item, I've just in the chat there put a list of the actions that we were discussing there. Um, so actually, when you when you lay it out, there's a fair a fair few different ones. Um, but if we can, I'll certainly I'll have them captured, and if we can make sure that they're um, noted, and if people see that I've forgotten any, then please please let me know. 
Okay, while they're being put up, there's group A, which is um, awareness raising and outreach. And then there's group B, which is um, inputs to the IGF and um, liaison with the MAG and group C, which is fundraising and group D, which is um, opportunities for substantive contributions and guidance. So the leads from the leadership panel um, for these are for group A, which is awareness raising and outreach, is um, Christoph Schubert from um, Poland. He's the lead for group A. For group, group B, inputs to the IGF and liaison with the MAG, it's Vin Cerf, who is the lead there. And for group C on fundraising, it is also Vin Cerf, who is the, um, the, the lead on the leadership panel for fundraising and group D, opportunities for substantive contributions and guidance is um, Lisa Fur. Um, she, she's the lead there. Yeah. So we can start off with um, Group A. Do we have any volunteers um, for or a volunteer for awareness raising and outreach? Who would want to be the, um, okay, Lito, thank you very much. So we'll just put Lito's name there. There's no objection to that. Nope, I'll check online. Um, none. So that's fine. And then my, the next group B, Inputs to the IGF and liaison with the MAG. Um, we have the chair. <laughs> no, I, was just, I, don't, I don't think we necessarily need one yeah. for that group. <laughs> okay. Uh, group C on fundraising. I think, okay, Chris, thank you. And Group D, opportunities for substantive contributions and guidance. And I'm also checking online to see if there's somebody online who would like to volunteer. I could do it anytime. Okay, yeah. great. And um, okay, thank you. So we'll go with those, and I'll just inform the um, chair of the leadership panel. And um, once he just gives his okay, and I'll make sure that you join the mailing list. I think that should be fine. Yes, Lito. <laughs> just a logistical question. Um, each of one, each of us who are legal songs to these groups, uh, we're supposed to maybe be invited to their meetings and uh, the, the, the specific group and the mailing list. My question is, well, I assume that it will be the case, but I assume as uh, Paul, as a, a chair, is also the liaison, the general liaison, will he be optionally in each of these meetings or only in the whole leadership panel meeting or, it's a logistical question, just, yes, thank you. Uh, Paul will be, I'm just answering for him, just in case he has other ideas. Uh, Paul is <laughs> um, on the leadership panel. He's the main liaison, and he is in some of the groups. As you can see, Group B, he's already there. But there's a difference between being there, and so I don't think we should exclude him. But yeah. mm. Does that make sense? And most of these groups, and we're talking about invitation to groups A, B, and C, and D, and these groups are usually done online. So there shouldn't be any um, difficulty for, on that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, Bruno. 
Yep. No, I think it's worth discussing this with them as well, because the way we proposed the liaisons was mostly to help share the, the communication load back and forth between the two groups, help like inform the two groups and have more oriented, um, even more oriented decisions and, and share a lot more about it. It's not like the MAG wants to influence the LP in any way, it's just that we would like to um, at least know a little bit better about the discussion. So it's mostly us proposing to be fully contributive to the discussions and help following them. So that's- uh, No, I think it was understood yeah. that um, it's basically just to help enhance coordination amongst the two, et cetera. And um, Vint, according to my understanding, was very receptive to that. So I'll just, you know, communicate with him to tell him what the, the discussion and the decision was. And then once he says, okay, we'll do that. I don't foresee any problems as such. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, your flag is up. Um, sorry, mine is for the PM. Uh, oh, for the PM. Yeah. Uh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Before we move on to that, because um, we are shrinking the schedule a little bit, um, any other thing we should be discussing on this um, topic, Bruno? Yes. Just about the main session. I'm, I need. I wanted to put myself forward to help organizing it. So my idea is to maybe work with uh, WG Strategy on a concept note and share with the Mag and just so we can start discussing it now, because assuming this main session on the process would be a very high level one, it would be good to get the agendas blocked as soon as possible. So putting myself forward to help drive, um, write the concept note. Okay, thank you very much. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do we have any other? Contribution, intervention, suggestion on this topic. Sorry, I'm hopping back and forth for my computer. Um, strategic vision for the future of the IGF. Um, if not, if it's okay, we can go to the next topic. Okay, um, policy networks. Um, yeah, thank you. I just want to briefly explain um, some of the changes that were done on the on the proposal on the policy network on AI, um, especially those that were adopted and that were not adopted. Um, so the first one um, was concerning uh, the description. So uh, as it reflected IGF messages, so uh, we could not adopt uh, any changes on the IGF messages as it was advised um, to maintain them as they are. Um, so there were some changes made in the document uh, previously on on um, on the IGF messages, uh, but we um, chose to to just maintain the IGF messages as they are and not um, fall into paraphrasing. Um, the second part was also um, to. Uh, to to sort of um, distinguish uh, additional description that was added that's not part of the IGF messages, especially the one on participation um, of representative from the global south uh, that should be actively promoted. So um, we sort of um, uh, made sure that um, this is distinctive and and the IGF messages remain intact um, in the description. Um, Furthermore, um, I think uh, the other changes that were done um, uh, were to explain further data governance as um, it was um, sort of uh, uh, broad. Um, so I think Jorge here um, uh, helped us define uh, what was meant by data governance. And it was added that is such uh, principles and rules aiming at avoiding bias in gender ethnicity class um, in data sets used to train AI systems, principles and rules on how data sets are governed by the community and or uh, what degree of control is attributed to citizens um, related cross-border issues uh, and more. Um, 
Uh, the other part was on, on, a, on a fully multi-stakeholder approach with bottom-up model with the Global South inputs. Um, so this was also added. Um, and lastly, um, to cooperate with actors and groups interested in this area um, with a special focus on UN agencies, I think Arid also uh, later mentions uh, linkages to um, UNESCO AI work uh, adopted by member states. Yeah. So those are the changes uh, that were made. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, did you manage to, could you also reshare the document just on the mag list um, so, so that people have a copy? Great, let me do that. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Bruna? Mm -hmm. Just a brief update on the policy network on fragmentation. We, I, we have already shared um, the, this proposal for this year with you guys on the previous meeting, so my notice is, is much shorter, just that we contacted the multi-stakeholder um, the group that helps um, steer the PNIF and, and we're checking whoever wants to continue and that and whether we need um, new members. Um, and also after that, and once we have the consultant, the idea is to host the first meeting for this year, just so we can help um, start, actually start. And in terms of outreach, um, we also have in mind to reach out to some NRIs. Um, we do um, think that their participation would be key um, for this year. Other than that, um, some workforces such as the ITF and, and other spaces that work on the more technical layers of the, the fragmentation discussion and um, to contact the WF and ISOC as well um, for this year, apart from the conversation with the UN Tech and Y office. So, a lot of this is yet to be um, well defined and validated with the MWG and the broader um, PNIF community, but that's um, our plan so far. Thanks. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry. I just I, does anybody have any comments for the AI or the uh, policy network on fragmentation? Any questions? Uh, we've we have had you know s several reviews of these. Just yes, Alice. Yeah. Just more on um, um, a collaborative note for um, the AI group is, again, sorry for my ignorance. Um, uh, does this, uh, how does this group interact with, um, with other organizations and, and groups dealing with AI? So, so for example, GPay um, and well, there are many more AI initiatives and groups. Um, and it would be good to 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 hear a little bit more about that. I think. Thanks. Um, thank you. Uh, would you want to answer that? Um, yeah, I just wanted to mention that um, part of the engagement and outreach plan is also um, cooperation with actors and groups interested in the same area. Uh, with a special focus on new agencies and collaborating organizations. Yeah. And also we stand as a secretariat as well, if they need help to outreach to other organizations that we may have better contacts with, we will do that. I mean, UNESCO is here as represented, but also ITU has got an AI track as well. So we will invite them uh, to come and collaborate and they have in the past for the others yeah. mm -hmm. and also please keep asking your questions that is very good and it's also good for us to rethink things that we're doing as well we shouldn't just be doing them because we've done them in the past we should see that there is logic to them and that they are contributing to the betterment of the process thanks <laughs> Just had a procedure. Bruna. Just a procedural question for the PNAI. Um, if they had started on the multi stakeholder working group, that's I mean, helps share the load, help like organize the work initially, and it takes a little time. So I'm not sure where they stand on this, but it would be good to know. I'm so sorry. You have to ask the question again. <laughs> Multi stakeholder working group, the, the group that we normally create to help steer the PNs. The PNIF has one. Yes. The, the, the more the administrative kind of group. Yes. So yes. Just a question whether the PNAI already has one or is still um, forming, creating. Well, so for, yes, forming it. 
Um, from not, I don't think not yet uh, created yet. Okay, yes, yeah. mm -hmm. but we will be assisting, and also when the consultant comes, the consultant can also assist with that. Uh, well, mm -hmm. yeah, thanks, Shankar. Is this a new policy network? Okay, because we've started a network uh, a working group in the Dynamic Coalition, the Internet Standards, Security, and Safety on this topic, and we have a proposal out which is now being considered for funding. So we may be starting doing things double in this regard. So is there a way to discuss how to move forward if we hear next week or two weeks from now maximum whether we have the funding to start the work? Yes, with the researcher that is paid, with the co coordinator being me, and uh, yes, there is. Uh, this is a new one. Um, the Meg agreed that to charter it, and um, thank you for yeah. informing us. <laughs> yes. uh, that, <laughs> That's what we uh, the one. So yes, we could look into it. Uh, I mean this. I mean, we have to look at the both both documents to see whether or not they are um, they they do align. But yes, I mean, there's no reason why we cannot, well, you know, from either merge completely or collaborate in some sense so that we're not duplicating um, the work. But there does definitely need to be some sort of a discussion and i propose that um well maybe not now but we can have a call um if either next week or the following week just to have a discussion on that and see what's needed to be done so that it's not a duplication yeah mm -hmm. well, this is walton well, again i think this is an excellent suggestion and just connect and see if it's totally different well that is the same and as I say, we have this proposal out and uh, we hope to have a positive reaction in the, the next two weeks. So let's take it from there. Thank yeah, you. sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thanks. Uh, so that's an, another action item that's going to be written down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so we have um, more. Uh, is there somebody here from the, sorry, I need my glasses. I think it's cybersecurity, right? We haven't heard, there's one we haven't heard from. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jungun and Amag member. Uh, we don't have any update yet to share about uh, the document that uh, uh, we have already shared to you in our last meeting, but uh, currently the coordinating team is working on the on the launch of the first kickoff. Will it will be next few days? So we don't have a substantive update yet. Okay, thank you. And it is understandable. I mean, it was just charted just now, and um, we're still getting the consultant, but. Hmm. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, Jim. And then um, I think the PNMA, uh, meaningful access. Anybody for meaningful access here? Um, whose name shall I call out? Um, sorry. Yes, thank you. Um, so the co-facilitators are Giacomo, Mazzone, and uh, Nima, the new MAG member. Uh, so Nima is not on the call now, and Giacomo informed he will join after during the afternoon, during the agenda slot for this item. Okay, uh, thank you. Well, that's one of the uh, results of um, finishing a bit early um, the other gender items. So we'll see if we can get him on. Um, if not, then uh, we'll have to do it um, later on. Um, thank you.
I think that's it. Um, the first thing to do is, um, as I've underlined, um, we are in the process of getting the consultants. Please do not let that stop you starting to formulate the groups and to discuss the initial plans, but the consultants will come. It's just a process that we have to um, go through and um, we will be doing that. Um, so that's for the best practice forums and the um, policy networks. Um, I, yes. Yes, Bruno. <laughs> Just a reminder, um, on the first day of the meeting, we discussed hosting this conversation between the NRIs and intersectional work. So to put this on our action points as well, because we wanted to promote some more um, um, like some a conversation between them, because there's a lot of overlapping stuff. And, and I think Walt's example, it's a good one on how these two spaces of the IGF should be um, doing this conversation and, and it's not often that they do so just to remind us okay thank you mm -hmm. um i'm looking at what did we have cyber security Cyber security has already been dealt with. Yeah, okay, okay. good. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, sorry. Oh, yes, that's the one. That's why it skipped my head. Okay, fine. Um, I'm going to look at him again because I think instead of saying cyber security, I should have said um, dynamic coalitions, right? Correct. Yes. yes. <laughs> I have two very concrete proposals to make, and I also have a question to ask an information point. Maybe the information point first. Uh, Wout has started a, a document which shows the work plans of the dynamic coalitions we have this year, and it is actually quite impressive, all the work that is underway. Uh, the concrete proposals, I already made that on the very first day of the open consultations, but the, the, the coordinating group of the dynamic coalitions uh, would like to make a proposal that we have an intercessional meeting of all the components of intercessional work, that is the policy networks, best practice forums, the NRIs and the dynamic coalitions to discuss how better to integrate them. We have made this time and again, they should be better integrated into the overall program, but we have never been very successful in doing so, and we think it will be helpful that we have an open discuss discussion among all these components of intercessional work. In the first reaction, already, I think a, a concrete proposal was to set up a working group. Maybe we could do that, that we have a representative of NRIs, a representative of each DPF and policy network, and also one of the dynamic coalitions to propose an agenda how to do that. And, our proposal was that we should have it maybe in conjunction with the next open consultation, have also a physical meeting that could be take, again be part of a hybrid in a hybrid format to deepen this discussion. So this is one concrete proposal. The other concrete proposal was we had over the years always had a MAG member being part as a co-facilitator of the coordinating group. And we felt as we have deepened our work, this should be maybe officialized. Currently, it is Adam who is co-facilitator of the <clears throat> coordinating group, that it should be officialized. And Adam himself made this proposal that it should be official liaison to the DC and maybe have a deputy in case he can't be on the call, that there's always some MAG representatives on the calls of the DC coordinating group so to have a better interaction between the MAG and the DCs. And lastly, I do have a question. I became privy to a query from the Office of the Tech Envoy as one of the DCs uh, submitted a proposal to the Tech Envoy consultation on the uh, GDC and the the Tech Envoy's office asked, are they entitled to use the UN emblem and the IGF logo? And there we would need to have guidance. And I think it would be helpful if the DCs know where they are. In my opinion, 
they are not entitled to use the UN emblem as they are not part of an intergovernmental process. But there, I would like to ask for an official guidance from, I don't know, be that you or be that uh, Waimin from UN DESA, so that we can get back to the DCs and tell them what they're allowed to do and what not. These are my concrete points. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Um, as far as the coordination group is concerned, yes, um, the secretary can support that. Um, is there a mailing list? We can um, make up a mailing list so that you have the um, the group where you can coordinate these. And I think, yes, that's a very good idea. Uh, as far as um, the liaison, um, it's... Is that okay that uh, we have an official liaison to the dynamic coalitions? I don't see any objection. And then my second question is, does anybody want to be the deputy? Or well, let's just say co-liaison. Let's not have deputy, it's co-liaison. Mm. Um, asking for volunteers. Yes, Alisa. Mm. Could it maybe be... Um... Before someone can say yes or no, uh, how much time would it consume? Um, so how often do they meet? How long are the meetings? Just a little bit more background info because I don't know if I would say yes what I'm saying yes to. Okay, yes. Marcus? It's roughly once a month, uh, one hour call. So it's not heavy, heavy in terms of commitment. Uh, I I will get back to this, but I, I will not say yes right now. <laughs> okay. So shall we put your name in pencil? Thin pencil. Okay. Thank you. Now, as far as the use of the UN emblem is concerned, we uh, the UN is very particular with when that is used, and it can only be used by people who are either the UN Secretariat or the uh, sister organizations. So um, DC's national and regional initiatives cannot use the UN emblem. Um, things that are produced by the Secretariat itself, yes, because we are part of the UN, but the associated, the bodies, such as you know, dynamic coalitions, et cetera, cannot use the UN emblem. Um, I don't know if Wyman wants to add anything. No. So it's not a debate, it's not a question, it's just a plain no. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. uh, the idea of emblem is different. Um, but it's an idea of emblem without the UN emblem. Yes, another idea of emblem. <clears throat> you cannot have in any shape, way or form something that looks remotely close to the UN emblem on your, or on whatever you are, because it may be mistaken for an official UN document, which has to go through certain processes. So you cannot have that. Yeah, uh, excuse me, and mm -hmm. what's the... Uh... And how can I say to my members that I'm not recognized by the IGF if I can't use the IGF emblem and it's not nothing so featuring that my NRI is a non featuring one? How can I say that I am the real one that represents in Italy, for instance, the IGF? Okay. Um, again, I want women to listen to me as well. I mean, you can have your, you know, Italian IGF. That's fine. You know, it, that's it. You can have at the bottom, you know, recognized by the UN IGF Secretariat, which is different from having your emblem and then that thing. But again, you have to be careful that content shouldn't be said that it is blessed by the IGF because it hasn't been through the MAG, it hasn't been through any other formal processes. It's just the same with the DCs. I mean, I hope that's clear, but Wyman is maybe more eloquent than me in explaining. 
Um, no, I think you have explained it clearly. I, I just shared the link uh, on the is a PDF document on the use of the UN emblem. Uh, to do Matthias, your question, I, I think the recognition as of now, the recognition of an NRI is in the IGF website, right? So, so, so that's the official recognition, and I think that is the mechanism when we look at uh, look at the the, the status of an NRI. Um, but moving forward, I think that will be perhaps part of the consideration of uh, of, of VCS plus twenty or IGF plus twenty in how to how to really to to. To, to better recognize uh, the the integral uh, the integral the role of the NRI in the IGF process. So, but I, I would say we have to work on both with what we have now, which is currently uh, the the process very much coordinated by Anya, as you all know well, and it is through the IGF website. Thank you. Yeah, so you can say recognized by the IGF secretary, but it's not. We're not endorsing everything that comes out because you know that needs some sort of a vetting. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Joyce. <laughs> Thanks, Chingatai. I I have no comments about the IGF emblem issue, so we're moving on from it. Then I'll continue. Uh, yes, and uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On the same, on the recognition, on the emblem, yes. Yes, uh, thank you, Shingatai. Not that we were thinking about it as the ISTC, but is the difference then that a best practice forum and a policy network have a paid consultant by the secretariat, and that dynamic coalition, some of them go through exactly the same process with vetting it by, by presenting it at the IGF, and that that is the reason that we can't use the emblem. So is there a solution if a DC would want to use it to make it an official IGF document? So is there an out of the box solution thinkable that would make it a real IGF I mean, outcome through the IGF process? We can discuss, I mean, what I'm saying is that there's no blanket recognition that if you have, your final report, let's say, and then you submit it to the secretariat, we can have some sort of formulation that we can agree on to have that, to make sure that you have that um, connection. But I'm just saying that you cannot automatically just say, okay, well, you know, we can just plaster the emblem in. We have to consider it carefully. Mm -hmm. Totally so thank you. One other request to the MAG, if I'm allowed to make it as a Dynamic Coalition. Marcus summarized my points quite excellently. I would like to add one request mm -hmm. that in July, you'll have decided on the working groups on the open forums, et cetera, that there may be tie-ins to some of the Dynamic Coalitions. There could be workshops on, on health, on e-health, there could be workshops on security, there could be, et cetera. So is there a way to link the intercessional work to the incidental work basically that is happening once so that the, the the work that we've been doing all the other way around that we can get fresh input into the work that we are doing so that there is a true interaction in the program and that would make also the messages probably a lot stronger so is is that a way that the mag could sort of liaise between the intercessional work and the, let's call it incidental work I think there is, and I think that would need to be discussed between the intercept, well, in the working group uh, that Marcus is saying to be set up, and the MAG liaisons can come and give feedback, and if the MAG agrees, we can have some sort of um, linkages, as as you've been saying, in the in the program, but uh, yes, that needs to be a discussion, and that needs to be a discussion in the mag as well, and then we see. But there's no, there's nothing stopping it. Put it that way. Yeah. Yes, Alison. Mm -hmm. Um, thank you. What what may, as a first step, help is that the document that Wows apparently has made on on all the work of the the dynamic coalitions could be shared. Then, also, for, um for um, MAG members when whenever the um, proposals come in, 
and they have this this list in mind, it would also help them, or well, at least it would help me um, thinking, hey, wait, this session proposal looks really a lot like what some dynamic coalition does, and well, either it could be merged or it could at least help with bringing people together, I think. Yes, thank you, Liz. And then I would also, you know, just sponsoring of that, I'd also suggest that you also liaise with um, Pieces Group on um, the workshop evaluations, et cetera. So they, they could make some decisions. There's the workshop form, but then there's also the evaluation process. So maybe that could be integrated somehow. Um, but I'll, that would be a discussion that you would have to have. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Any other discussion on the emblem logo? <laughs> yes. No, excuse me, but I don't want to see a bit naughty, but it's just for telling IDF is a very important, really, um, topic because uh, we're not supported by the government. Uh, we are not a government association. So it's a, we are some volunteers that uh, from the bottom, we create something. That's for us, it's really important to have a connection with dynamic coalition, because in a sort of way we give it to our membership uh, or our, the people who are involved in our process and our community of IGF uh, to be in a sort of way linked uh, with uh, uh, international IGF. That because I keep stressing about the emblem, uh, about the be recognized by the UN, because uh, otherwise Italy can came up a lot of IGF because the government is not uh, uh, is 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 not. Uh, involved in us so we are some people uh, like in uh, some other states uh, that we really work uh, a lot of voluntary just to uh, be a part of a uh, community this is for us I, I was, i'm sorry if i keep saying but it's really important it's just this because he, it's here paula and I, I would like just to make some an instance of that uh, we have a company that i cannot say the name but i'm glad that you are here <laughs> I'm excuse me, but I, I, I try to be uh, politically correct. Uh, that uh, uh, is involving in international IGF, uh, but is not supporting the Italian one because they have some doubts that we are not very, the real IGF in Italy, we're not supported by the government and we are not recognized by the UN. You know, that's our real problem. You, you can have that wording recognized by the I. IGF, yes, that's a Yeah, yeah, yes. Uh, uh, yeah, no, I mean, you can have that wording somewhere and we can, you, you can discuss it with Anya. Um, that wording, yes, it's there. It's just that you shouldn't have wording that would suggest that all your outputs are official IGF outputs. That's uh, that's a different matter. Yeah. Yes, mm. Joyce. Mm. Thanks, Chingatai. Um, I'm not sure that this is an issue that the MAG um, is able to provide any advice at the moment. I'm not sure this is something, you know, that can be discussed in any really substantive way. I know Wyman has put the, the link in the Zoom chat for those who are interested to understand um, how the use of the uh, UN emblem should be done. So I, I'd suggest those of you who are interested to go take a look at the link and familiarize yourselves with the rules and the guidelines. And if this really is an issue that needs to be tabled to the MAG, I suggest we do it at the next meeting and put it in the agenda for discussion. Otherwise, I'd suggest we move on. Having said that, um, we did talk a bit about engagement mm -hmm. uh, between the international work the DCs, the, the policy networks, the best practice forums um, with the NRIs. And I do have a concrete suggestion for an action point, which is might we um, invite perhaps um, whoever is coordinating the DCs, um, someone from the PNs and the BPFs to attend the NRI meetings uh, or the coordination sessions and have some time to just promote update on the work that's being done and then you know let them have the opportunity to then talk to the NRIs to also seek members into into their working groups so there could be a two-way conversation I know the NRI meetings tend to be very packed it's also for the NRIs to have dialogue um, amongst one another but if we want to have a closer connection perhaps we could try and build into the agenda a bit when they meet just to have you know different groups coming in and 
providing some information about the work that's being done in the IGF space at large. Thanks. Yes, um, we were going to have an, up, an update uh, from the NRIs, and I think that one can also uh, be answered by our the NRI coordinator in our office. Um, we can have it now. I was going to go through the working groups in the NRIs, but uh, well, well, we can just switch it around. That's fine. If you are you ready? Uh, mm -hmm. hmm. Yes, thank you, Cheng Tai, and maybe I'll start by responding to Joyce. We we have had those practices in past where the facilitators of the intersectional work would join the NRI meetings and uh, they would brief them, even consult them on some matters which were uh, important to them. Uh, in addition to that, some of the intersectional work facilitators would um, adjust the methodology of collecting inputs specifically to the NRI needs. So for example, you know, that in past BPFs would create special set of surveys or polls just for the NRI. So it would be different than to the broader community. I think, and I, I certainly, as an NRI focal point, and I'm sure I can speak also for the NRI colleagues that are here and that are not here, that that practice really is welcome to, to continue. And I think it's useful. But what I see as an issue in the past couple of years is that the NRIs collectively are, be are becoming busier and busier with the uh, um, joint activities that they are um, coordinating and trying to deliver uh, at the global level. And they're certainly busier and busier at their individual levels. And colleagues that are here uh, associated with the NRIs can, and you, Joyce, probably can also confirm that because I think the processes are really growing in substance, um, in logistics as well at the NRI levels. So we probably need to brainstorm a little bit on what's the most effective methodology to work with the NRI colleagues to use just time efficiently. But I think there's will, and that's probably the most uh, important, that awareness is there and, and willingness. So with that, maybe I can just say a few words about the NRIs and uh, overall update. So now we are at 156 officially recognized NRIs. Uh, uh, just for the sake of transparency, uh, I'll inform you that the Secretariat is in really intensive communication with a couple of uh, teams which are eager to establish their own national or sub-regional youth processes. So they are based in um, nine countries I have on my list. So in Cambodia, Iran, Maldives, Mali, we're also speaking uh, with Pakistan a lot about the youth IGF establishment. Central American IGF as a sub-regional one, Kyrgyzstan, and also with Nicaragua. Mm, there are also some um, intentions from Libya to establish a Libya youth IGF. There is a national IGF already in place. And I think, especially on the latter one, I think this year we will see progress on there because the North African IGF is happening in uh, uh, in, in Tripoli. So that, that probably will give some uh, fruitful ground for stakeholder engagement there. Uh, speaking collectively about the NRIs. We spent the first two months in intensive discussions about what the network wants to do for this year. I think last year showed to be quite successful. So a set of activities that were delivered last year will be followed also this year. But I'll just tell you very quickly what the NRIs agreed annual work plan is about and what are the objectives. So one of the objectives certainly is to prepare collectively for uh, the Kyoto IGF, the set of activities there uh, will be focused again on asking for, for a main session for up to five collaborative session on different issues, which we are now discussing. Um, and also the big um, NRI coordination session. For the coordination session, there is already, I think, appetite to discuss the sustainability, better cooperation at the global level, better way to support the NRIs. So those are some of the subjects that, uh, that emerge now. Uh, and uh, one addition is that there is um, a strong need for a boot at the IGF village in Kyoto as a space where in an informal maybe way, uh, exchanges can happen between the NRIs, but also between the community. So we'll see to organize that and request one for this year. And, uh, and also there's been a strong demand to improve the communication from the side of the secretariat over the NRIs, but also among the NRIs. So one of the, uh, one of the ways to do that that was proposed and seems that we will be implementing is 
quarterly newsletter to be established to go on the mailing list and then to start some discussions on the mailing list which are thematic because so far the mailing list is our really modus operandi for just the work objectives that we agree on. So it's pretty much work related. And uh, now there, are, there is a demand that we start discussions on topics which are of interest to the NRI, such what I mentioned, maybe about sustainability, about funding, but maybe even thematically. So the Secretariat will support that the, following the demand that comes from the coordinators. And, uh, and finally, I would like just to uh, say a few words about the youth track because it relates to the NRI's work. I um, mean, certainly the youth track is not uh, led exclusively just by the NRI's, but probably the strongest driving force behind it uh, are the NRI coordinators, those who are running the youth IGFs. And maybe I can quickly share my screen. I think it's a pity not to show the list of the coordinators that are working on this. Yes, yeah, so I think on the screen, you will see that we are working with more than I think 30 youth IGFs. Uh, those are really wonderful colleagues um, helping us to shape and design, implement the whole youth IGF track. And uh, we already had uh, quite a number of meetings. And now I'm gonna quickly share with you one slide just quite a number of meetings to understand what's the bottom-up um, desire for the focus, thematic focus of the overall track. And it was decided that following really the, I think, achievements of last year's track on digital transformation, that this year we build on the outcomes and the messages from last year and to focus on trust and, uh, and security areas. So that probably will be aligned with the IGF uh, sub-teams as well. So safe digital future is basically the motto of the, of the youth track and the structure will be uh, similar to last year where we would have four interconnected capacity development workshop uh, focused on particular issues nested under the main team of secure, cybersecurity and trust. Uh, we are discussing uh, still with the colleagues of the regional IGFs on the exact dates, but the, it's been confirmed that the four capacity development workshops will be hosted hybrid format uh, and implemented together with the regional IGF. So I think the first one will be at Eurodig in Finland, um, African IGF, uh, Latin American IGF, the youth one, as well as the APR IGF. And all that then feeds into the big global youth summit, which will be hosted on day zero um, in, in Kyoto. We are hoping again for the messages from youth. And then finally, uh, if you're asking me what could be the, the issues that the particular issues that are of interest for young people, uh, that's something that we will be discussing toward the end of this month on our call. But we did have among the youth uh, coordinators a poll. And it was interesting to see that AI, for example, and cybersecurity implications is of their highest interest, privacy, security, freedom of expression online but also child online safety and uh, capacity development, which I think is always one of the top um, topics, whichever uh, issue that you're discussing. So that would be on the, um, on the youth track, just a few words and uh, happy to respond to any of the questions we have. Thank you. Yes, Joyce. Thanks very much, Anya, for the update. Very comprehensive. Just wanted to make a comment, not a question. Um, to say very proud of the youth track for having the 2023 motto. I think that kind of should pressure the MAG to also, you know, finalize our main theme and the subtracks as well. Um, and then perhaps the question leading on to that is not for you, but maybe for, for Chengatai and the chairs, um, if we would continue that discussion today uh, regarding the tracks, or are we looking to bring that to the mailing list? Or is that, what, what is the thinking around it? Thanks. Yes, the thinking is both. <laughs> um, but yes, uh, we do have a uh, final formulation that we, but we let's finish this and then we'll discuss that. Mm. Yes, Elisa. Mm. Thank you, Chengatai. Um, could we maybe go back to the sheet where, which has the overview of the topics youth are interested in? Sure. Mm. Because 
um, it were quite small letters and <laughs> a lot of uh, things. But if I looked cor well, if I was looking correctly, um, I didn't see any anything really on the more technical part of um, um, well, how is the internet governed or how. Um, so, so maybe looking more at things I can do or um, uh, on standardization. Um, I I understand this is a bottom-up process, but um, I think it's also really quite important that, that youth also maybe get educated about how the internet really works. So um, uh, maybe it's also something that can go two ways and, and well, partially also be fed to the youth how, um, well, um, just maybe a concrete suggestion is, and probably I can does already uh, get involved with, with the NRIs or with the youth track, um, but maybe some presentations, um, um, just to get them also a bit more up to speed with, with, with the more technical side of the internet and, 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 well, in the Netherlands, we make the distinction of um, um, regulation of the internet and regulation on the internet. And um, here are a lot of topics of things that happen on the internet and not of how the internet is structured. Um, and I do think that, well, in all these organizations, um, people are aging and it's good to have young, new people also getting interested in it and partly you get interested when you know more. Um, so I think this is also a really good opportunity to get them involved and slightly more knowledgeable about uh, about these processes. Uh, thank you, Liz. Um, also before um, Anya responds, maybe you want to blend in the capacity development angle as well, that we do. Yes, no, thank you very much, Elisa. Well, one of the demands of uh, young people for years now has been that they don't speak to themselves in silos. They really welcome cooperation and certainly specifically with the MAG as well. So I think maybe building on your proposal, it'd be good to approach them, those meetings that we're having are completely open to everyone and share with them uh, and see the secretariat certainly is always uh, willing within its capacity to support the implementation of whichever act activities that are of interest to young people, but also for the better cooperation between senior stakeholders and youth. Uh, we did follow the bottom up, yes, um, um, selections of the young people, but certainly that doesn't prevent us or limit us to go beyond that. And I think you're very much right. Those topics are exotic to some areas, I think. Um, and then uh, just maybe to connect that with the capacity development, this year, we are again going to pursue the capacity develop implementation of the capacity development strategy, similar to last year. Uh, and through the capacity development, we are also trying to respond uh, again within our capacity to the demand of the community. And there are those demands, which you said, especially from the newcomers. They're not necessarily young people, certainly, but uh, they are interested to understand better the technical layers and functionality of the internet before going into policy. And uh, we will adjust our capacity development workshop uh, program to also respond to te those technical layers. And uh, I mean, given certainly your great proposal, I'll be then free to start communicating with the MAG through you firstly and see from there how that can develop. Thank you. Yes, Lito. <laughs> On this topic, which I think is very important, how much relationship is there between the youth IGF proposals and the several schools of govern, internet governance around the world? That could be a, a very good um, synergy between both. So we could arrange by region, if possible, uh, having the youth IGF proponents or leaders uh, somehow being obliged to, to, to take one of these uh, school governance programs. Thank you. 
Yeah, thank you very much, Lita. That's something that also emerged, I think, on one of the NRI meetings, the need to cooperate more and also to support more schools on internet governance. So uh, I'll pass on this uh, to the youth coordinators as well to specifically um, run this cooperation with the youth IGS. Thank you. Uh, yes. Oh, yes, Amrita, please. Hmm. Thank you, Chengitai. I think uh, the involvement of youth um, in mainstream discussion is important, and that was specified by the youth during one of the working group IGF strategies. So perhaps when we are discussing the themes or the main sessions, et cetera, we could think of uh, kind of mainstreaming the youth engagement there. Regarding the topics they are interested in, I think this is, um, you know, while all the aspects are important, I think globally this is what they felt was important. But of course, if there are other discussions on ICANN or any other uh, places, and I personally know a few of the youth who are involved in the ICANN engagements, um, that would help. But I think if they want to discuss these topics, it is something they feel is relevant for them, and we may want to respect that also. Uh, thank you, Amrita. Chris, so Bruna, uh, Chris, Chris. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. So on on the youth um, track issue, I think I, I agree with a lot of what's been said here. I think there are a lot of different opportunities, whether it's SIGs or intersessional work, um, or just generally the the sort of broader ecosystem, um, where it's good to. Um, do what we can to work with the youth track and with youth participants to, um, as Amrita says here in the, the chat, mainstream um, the youth engagement on all discussions. Uh, so I think that should be a real priority. Uh, I know we, we've had some interconnection just recently with the working group strategy and the youth track participants. And um, I, I know um, uh, Lily Ednam Botsoye Botsio, I'm sorry about the pronunciation there, um, joined the last working group strategy call and gave a, a good update on where the youth track um, was at. And we had some discussions there, um, as I mentioned about a uh, possible uh, youth seat on the mag. Um, but I think that there is a need here. And as we've discussed for a lot of different um, efforts to connect the youth um, track and the youth participants with everything else that's going on. Um, so I think that's also something for the intersessional work coordinators to take away um, and, and sort of look at what the different intersessional groups and activities um, can do to, to engage with the youth there. One question I had for Anya, and this is stepping away from the youth and back to the NRI's activity, you mentioned they're talking about a main session um, at the IGF 2023 focused on sustainability. Is that sustainability of the NRI's themselves or sort of environmental sustainability issues? Yes, so um, that's so not for the main session. That's for this traditional coordination session, like an open work meeting between the NRIs and everyone else. But yes, sustainability of their processes. So it's a very broad concept. It relates to funding, certainly, but also to just people involved, the human factor. That, that's of interest. Yes. Great. Yeah, that sounds very timely and relevant. So quite good to hear. Anybody else? Youth capacity development um, questions? Suggestions for improvement, working with MAG? Um, for the, uh, sorry, um, as far as the youth goes with the, I just wanna make this very, very short. Um, having a youth seat on the MAG, I mean, there's the option of it's good to know what you think but of course we have to um, have the discussion in new york but um instead of a youth seat per se i mean okay that's one option which um, i'm a little bit hesitant of for we don't want to really expand we can have youth observers that they can pick two youth observers like we have for the igos that's another option that we can have or we can make sure that 
within the four team MAG members, we make sure that one, not just one, but a couple of the a couple of the MAG members who are represented, because the youth are not just standalone youth, right? They are youth that do work for um, organizations that are in the um, the stakeholder groups that we have already established. And again, I'm a bit wary of expanding the stakeholder group because once you have one, then we'll have a, a whole number of requests. So since you've put in youth, you, why don't we have this? Why don't we have indigenous? Why don't we have, you know, underrepresented? And it just goes wild. Yes, Chris. Yeah, what, what you're saying in your second point there, I think is very something that resonates a lot with me. Now, I think it, it would be, I, I don't want to speak for youth, and I, I certainly think it's better that we engage with the youth track participants um, to see what they're, if they have a preference. But I absolutely agree. I, I, I think observers doesn't seem quite right to me. I think that sort of does, um, yeah, establish this sort of quasi stakeholder group on the side. And I'm not sure that's that's the best way. And I, I mean, I, I think if, to the extent that that's necessary, that's all already there with the youth track. Um, I guess, and, and I, I think my, if I was to have a preference or if I, if, if I was to sit, to sort of speak to what I see as the best, it's something like what you're saying there, which is simply in selecting MAG members from the existing <laughs> stakeholder communities um, to really make a strong effort to include among those um, individuals who have strong existing connections to the youth track and to the, the sort of um, youth participant group there. Now, I, yeah, so whether that's sort of, it's it's enough to make that aspirational, um, I, well, a couple of years of trying that would 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 tell whether that, that's enough. And, it, and if it doesn't happen, then maybe a, a more formalized approach would be necessary. But um, yeah, I, I think for me, if, if there was a sort of good faith effort in this year's MAG renewal process to include among those seated um, at least a couple or at least one or two um, who have strong existing connections, demonstrated connections to the youth track and its um, activities, I think that would be useful because then they, we can trust them to bring into the into the sort of mag discussions and process the perspectives from that youth track um, discussion. Uh, thank you, Kristen. Noted, uh, Bruna. Thank you, Tai. Um, I was just going to point out that this is yet another issue of diversity and representation in another space of the IGF that we have been discussing a lot. Um, even the youth issue is a matter of it's it's yet another sign or like signal of how much we could improve um, diversity in our space. But um, for now, I would say like in terms of mag members and and how we we fill um, the the slots for mag members, my only recommendation would be to make the criteria for diversity a bit stronger on that sense. Like so, make sure we can bring um, youth representatives, but not just them other communities and other parts, because going back to yesterday's discussion on whether we would include academia on the form or not, for us to compromise on bringing youth now will be a little confusing because we didn't decide anything yesterday about a much um, more acknowledged um, stakeholder, much more, um, a much older stakeholder in this process. And, and now we're doing like um, a, a different, kind of a similar discussion before a different stakeholder. So I'll be wary of like maybe us being forcing the diversity criteria for filling the mag slots for now, and then do a broader discussions on like what are the actual stakeholders or not. Because I do I come from one of those movements as well, and I know that their main request is should be acknowledged as one stakeholder. And I know that there's like this huge discussion on whether or not they are one. So um, to be um, aware of that um, as well. Maybe for now, what, what we can also suggest is we are talking a lot about the liaisons. So maybe we can have a liaison with the youth track to bring the discussions as well to the MAG and, and see how can we fit this into the, the broader um, sub-themes discussion and workshop selection and, and so on. So that's one suggestion. Let's try to have a liaison or two liaisons with the youth track so we can um, bring information as well and enhance coordination. 
Uh, thank you, Bruno. So I would um, suggest that maybe if Anya could discuss that with the youth that we could offer a, at the moment liaisons and see what they say about that. A big pardon? Oh, Amrita. And then Joyce. Thank you, Changita. I, I tend to agree with you that um, as in, we need to have a diverse mag for sure, but categorizing and specifically, uh, you know, I would use the word quota, I may be wrong for a particular section of a community, may be a wrong way, but I think we should have capable people coming in. They may be young people who bring in their views, not necessarily coming from the youth track. And in that context, I do like Bruna's idea of having a liaison because then you have the people who are actually working at the youth track, someone there to kind of share ideas. But if we want to bring in the quota system of, okay, we have to have youth, then we will also say we need uh, people with uh, disability being there or from certain communities, et cetera. I don't think we should go down that road, at least at this point of time. We need to have diverse people, yes, but do we need to bracket it? I guess no, thank you. Uh, thank you, Amrita. Joyce. Thanks very much, Chengatai. Joyce Chen, Mac member. Um, pardon my ignorance, but perhaps could someone just sort of run through the process of the youth track and whether there's already existing engagement with Mac members? Um, is there some kind of a mentorship that's going on, perhaps with Mac members involved? Um, and then we can also think about, um, and, and I do support the idea of having a liaison, but first I'd like to know, you know, in the first place, how is it being run and, you know, how might we engage? There might be other opportunities that we could think about. Thanks. Please, Anya. Yes, thank you, Joyce. Um, so we work as equals with the youth IGF coordinators and young people delegated by the most stakeholder organizing committees of the other national and regional IGFs, which do not have youth IGFs processes in place. Um, then the coordinators communicate with their respective communities when we need input, when we need engagement and so on. And especially on presenting opportunities to youth population within their communities. So they're, they're focal points for that. So in other words, the process is completely open as everything in the IGF context for anyone to join as equal and contribute to the discussion. And that's important for us. So it's uh, basically, yes, it is bottom up, but it's also an equal footing. The secretariat also participates in the discussions. We are not uh, absolutely neutral. So we share our views and we try together with all the participants to reach consensus. Um, in addition to the youth IGF coordinators, ISOC uh, is also very active there. There is a delegated colleague, a staff member of ISOC foundation um, that, um, channels the cooperation between the youth track of the IHGF and the ISOC ambassadors program that's been run annually to equip young people to come to the IHGF. Thanks very much, Anya. Then might I suggest, um, you know, while we're thinking about perhaps um, having Mac layers on to the group, um, to also think about potential mentorship so that you know, those of us who are on site at the IGF itself could have face time with the youth track. We can build it into our schedules. Um, and I think that would perhaps maybe build a step-by-step -step process towards one day when the MAG is ready, having youth observers or youth, even youth MAG members to, to join the MAG. So I think maybe more engagement can be done. Mentorship could be one way. The APRGF, for example, has a pretty good mentorship program um, for the youth IGF. So it's not, not something that's totally new. Thanks. Yes, thank you very much, Joyce. I really welcome and like the idea and I'll pass on to the entire group. You're also most welcome to join the next school, present that, I think it's a great opportunity. I know that for the mentorship program, it's been called cool for those initi initiatives before. It's just that the secretariat is really not with the capacity to facilitate. It's uh, quite a uh, big bite to take. But last year, I just want to add, because it relates to that, uh, last year you would remember that we did approach the MAG, especially the main session co-facilitators, to just present them with opportunities to engage better uh, their sessions with, the, with young people. There are certainly already experienced experts, uh, and there are those who are willing to learn more. 
Um, so we did give a list of what we call the resource persons. Those are the youth IGF coordinators and uh, also young people who are delegated by the organizing committees, which have expertise in particular areas of internet governance. So that was identified and uh, it was sent to the MAG to consider engaging them. So it was a pilot and I think we, we, we saw some success there and uh, maybe we can build on that for this year even better. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do we have any further questions on the youth or the youth track? And we do have our action items. I don't know if you want me to read them out or um, for the NRI's discussion. Um, oh yes, uh, MAG member Elisa Hiva to attend open youth track meeting with suggestion for youth capacity development on technical knowledge of the internet. That's one. Two NRI coordinator will take a will take to youth coordinators suggestions for the cooperation between themselves that's the liaison um, thing. and then also for the um, cooperation between themselves and the schools of internet governance um, And then um, the last one is uh, MAG member Joyce Chen invited to attend the youth meetings to discuss mentorship. Uh, if I've missed anything, please let me um, know. For the intersessional work, it's, uh, a call will be arranged between the Policy Network on AI and the IS3C. Yeah. <laughs> uh dc coordinated by um which oh yes right yes of course uh to, to discuss their sy synergies yes yes exactly and um alisa will consider um if she has the time to put in to be um a mag liaison to the dcs thanks I think that's it. And um, I don't think I need to go back further, right? Uh, we, uh, I think that's fine. Um, next on the agenda item, we had the um, working groups, uh, MAG working groups. Um, I feel that we have had a discussion with the um, working group on um, workshop processes, but if you please feel if you want to add something else for further discussion in the MAG, please do. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chengetai, peacefully, Vamugi for records. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing to really add. We have started to, uh, to work on the evaluation uh, criteria. So mm -hmm. that's what I can say, and then we will go on to make uh, adjustments on what we discussed yesterday. Thank you. Yeah. Are there any follow-up questions on that for the MAG working group on evaluation? I think we've had a discussion, but if there's something we've missed, please. Yeah. No, okay. And then the next working group is um, the working group on IGF strategy. Uh, they have made interventions throughout, but if there's something that you want, um, yes, Joyce. Sorry, Chengatai, to interrupt, just to revisit um, the working group and working pro pro processes. Yes. Um, uh, in terms of the evaluation criteria, are there specific recommendations to the MAG for how we might um, uh, not sure how to put it, but to ensure gender balance in, for example, the speakers list, you know, during our evaluation. So for example, if we get proposals that have all male panels, is there a kind of evaluation criteria that we should try and follow or something like that? Thank you, Jay. So we have uh, the section that talks about diversity that looks at that male, female, looks at uh, uh, the group, the age, you know, looks at um, what else, I don't have it all paid, but yes, we have that. So when we're evaluating, we have to consider all that. Uh, but uh, yes, that's in the, in the evaluation form. I will share it with the with the mug as we look at it, and you can feel free to make input. 
Thank you. Yes, Bruno. Yeah, same issue, because I remember last year we evaluated a lot of webinars, oh, not a lot of the workshops with like four speakers and one woman as a moderator. And to me, they were all no's, to be very honest, because I don't think it's even acceptable to be in 2022, 2023, and, and people still have the courage to suggest workshops with all male speakers. And um, but yeah, but maybe we, what we can do is is go through the, the evaluation criteria again, and see what else we can add to that in order to 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 keep on moving towards that direction. Because I know in some areas, like it might be, it might look hard to find female specialists. And I'm not just talking about the female community. I also think we do have a lot to improve in terms of bringing the LGBTQI plus community as well. And that seems to be left outside our evaluation processes, like somehow the, this, this other community, not just the female, male, female, binary kind of discussions. But um, but I can I can also put myself forward to help you with this. So check it out, can I just so I think it also takes us back to the uh, proposal forms that we are sending out. We need to emphasize some of these things because if we are going to be very strict at the evaluation point, yet we do not emphasize these kind of things at the beginning, then it's difficult. So that, you know, that needs to start from the form that we send out, emphasis on gender and all the diversity aspects that we're talking about. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Vis. Yes, Chris. Uh, I just want to note, I mean, we do have in, in that introduction to the, the proposal form, uh, we, we noted two things yeah first was the importance of diversity um, and we talk about diversity viewpoints but also experience age stakeholder group geographic area gender disability um so it, it's there in the very opening um of of the the, the form but I, I absolutely think we should, we need to look at how um how else we can bring it in or how we can emphasize that um the other point that we might make in that opening is the importance of the hybrid event and having people on site so i think as the working group, we identified those two points as really key to um, in, ensuring good proposals and proposals that would um, ensure a, a rich IGF event. Yes, Ruth. Thanks, Shingatai, and, and thanks, Peace, for clarifying. Um, I'm gonna make a very controversial proposal or suggestion, and I'd like for us to maybe think about it or at least have some discussion, which is would the MAC be prepared or able to accept if we said in, in the evaluation or in the proposal form that the MAC would not accept any proposals that had all male speakers or that did not have gender diversity? Do we Would we go so far as to say that as a standard? Thank you, Joyce. I think, uh, to me, I think it's not, but I don't know what the rest think. What do other people think? But I think it's it's nice for us maybe to put it out because it's a very important aspect of, you know, this conversation. Thank you. Uh, Jung Bunen, my member. Um, we have a system to rank the proposals when we are evaluating. So, um, it's in the criteria diversity is a, uh, in the ranking, but it's not uh, it's not really mandatory in the process. So it's ranked. They are uh, The proposals are evaluated uh, according to the diversity, to the to the inputs, to the outreach, to the outputs. To the, uh, we are expected, but it's not mandatory that it should be. Uh, gender balanced and uh, having all the stakeholders present in the proposal. Try to jump in, but I guess Joyce's question is whether we should change this understanding. Should it be from now on? Because like, I, I keep on thinking, I mean, my the example I'm gonna quote is the Brazil IGF and, and the gender and diversity, like regional diversity has a weight in the evaluation process, right? So you cannot move forward if you don't achieve those two. Like I'm not saying it has to be like fully diverse. It, it maybe has like two or three of the, the five Brazilian regions and, and um, some kind of um, 
balance in gender, but maybe it would be interesting for us to move forward in that because we also know that as much work as we do right now, the, the configuration of the panels in at the IGF can be much different as well because some people, as we've been saying, like they, they try to game the system, they submit different names, and in the end of the day, the web the workshops look much different. So we can try to avoid the all male panels now, but maybe we can still have them at the IGF. But in, in my perspective as well, it will be really worth um trying to do to be more precise on that sense right now because it has been um, a recommendation from the BPF gender previously. We have assessed gender balance or, I mean, diversity at the IGF before, and, and we have done very little in the submission form in, in terms of that. So yeah, just, just um, an idea. Um, excuse me, uh, I think uh, yani, uh, the diversity is very important in, 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 in all the session that we are, we are we're having. But my question is that if we have um, a very good proposal does not have that uh, diversity balance, is there is a chance that we we can give a helping hand to the proposal, uh, to the, the, the one who proposed, and we might propose yeah, any high quality names or try to enhance this? Because I think we should not jeopardize the quality of the proposal. But uh, if it is a um, diversity issue, probably because of the speakers or, or the panelists, then I think we can we can uh, provide a helping hand on that. Thank you. And online we have Henriette. Oh, Amrita. Thank you, Thank you. Um I think the Bye -bye. diversity point is important. We need to have um gender balance and uh, and obviously when we say gender uh, we are just not meaning women but uh, we need to have age um and we also want diversity of views we don't want tokenism just because we want two women to be there we put them that is not something which we want um so i think we need to stress that there has to be diversity in the panel based upon it and the small note this time says that um, also, while evaluating, there are criteria, you know, weightage put in different um, criteria. So I think that could help in um, kind of evaluating the proposals, whether we want to take a hard stand. Um, it is for the MAG to decide, but um, while we should have gender um, balance in the in the session, but will that bring diversity of thought, you know, is only gender balance one thing in the session or we want to balance the different views coming and not having the same people speaking the same language is something we need to see. Um, and um, we also have to be cognizant of the fact that, as Bruna mentioned, what is mentioned in the form may not be the final list of speakers because um, A, it may be aspirational and two, it may be that people may not be there. So um, it's not a perfect world. We could try to do it, but making it mandatory um, may lead to tokenism. That is also a concern, but yes, we want diversity in the table. Yes, Brina. I, yeah, I mean, we can take some, some further discussions on this because I don't necessarily agree with Amrita that this is tokenism. I think it's the other way around. I think that any panel that doesn't bear in mind any level of diversity, let it be gender, regional, or anything of the sort, is already a jeopardized discussion. I mean, it's part of this community, like a lot, lots of this community are just tired of having the same old discussions being held by Global North representatives about the same perspectives and the same point of view. And I think that the, the main goal of the IGF is to open up the discussion to even more and more and more people. And, and we keep on hearing um, Amandeep saying about how he wants to take this message further. And I think this is also our task in some way. So I, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I don't know whether we should make this mandatory or not. I, I, I'm, I'm saying like maybe we can um, analyze what is the weight that we're giving to diversity on the submission form and have, a, as I have been saying this past days, like a, a stronger commitment to bringing more diversity to this because it's it's sometimes it's just a little sad how many like mm -hmm. parts of the world we're, we're leaving behind in these discussions and, and there's a lot of things to be done yet. So 
any effort we can do now, even if it's just aspirational, um, it, it will be worth it. And it's a good sign for the community. So that's that's just- uh, Simon, I'm hearing two things. Um, excuse me, and I wasn't, didn't have, um, diversity is important. Diversity should be man, uh, mandatory. Uh, and then there is the question that we started off with. Is it diversity mandatory, which is all forms of diversity, or is it gender diversity has to be mandatory as well? I mean, yeah. Uh, so, Sorry, I'm I, just coming in. Um, yeah. I didn't mean that diversity should not be there in the panel. Yes, yeah. diversity should be there. I was talking that should we emphasize only on gender diversity? Yes, uh, exactly. I, I, I fully understand you. I just didn't fully understand um, Bruna because yes, I think we all agree that diversity is mandatory and we have several dimensions of diversity, you know, regional stakeholder and et cetera, and those should be put in. And at one extreme, we cannot have a fully diverse panel of all the diversities because then you'll have, you know, at 15, I mean, there's 15 diversity dimensions, you'll have a 15 member panel and you want to get to, so, but we do understand the importance of gender balance and I just wanted to see if what you what you're proposing is are we making gender uh, the gender diversity factor mandatory uh, that's a, you see that's a different discussion yeah I understand it's a different mm -hmm. discussion now what I'm saying about the gender discussion it's sex be at least coherent with what he ha we have been discussing the past years we had a BPF gender for five, six years um, that held a lot of interesting discussions on how this space could be even more improved in terms of the, the, the gender diversity. So my suggestion would be for us to, to have a, a better weight or a better um, kind of evaluation towards that area. Yes, of and of course, there's also, the, uh, is it one gender? Uh, should it be one member or should it be 50-50? We are the year and we, try, we strive for 50-50. I know we cannot do it, but that's what we strive for. Uh, I mean, those are all the questions that we're asking, but Teresa's waving her mm -hmm. hand. <laughs> yes, I'm waving my hand. Uh, thank you, uh, Teresa, Mac member. Um, I'm here a little bit with Amrita Bruna. Uh, yes, uh, I understand your point of view, but I think that um, by having the various sections uh, in the evaluation form, like very likely, first of all, I don't think we will see proposals with just male panels submitted, you know? I mean, if this is happening, then somebody is really like not in 2023 probably. So, but hopefully if this happens, if we feel that some diversity criteria is not uh, weighed well enough, this proposal will not rank very high. That's first thing. So it might not even get in the narrower selection of proposals that within the issue teams we are then discussing. Then uh, most of you uh, who are on at least the second tier know that once the issue teams meet, then we discuss, then we can get into the proposals. And if we are facing a choice, are we gonna go with this one or that one? You know, somebody would bring up, but hey, look at this proposal's diversity criteria. Uh, you know, it's very problematic and that proposal will probably not, um, stand much uh, chances. But I think it's a little bit dangerous to start discussing here whether having a gender balance panel is more important than you know some of the other very important part of the application form. So that's just my point of view. Uh, you know, also we could we could start thinking about some not like exceptions, you know, but I do recall several proposals from the last batch, which for instance were focused on one region. Yes. Then Yes, that proposal maybe didn't wasn't that gen uh, not gender uh, regionally you know diverse as it could have been, but had it been, if I'm I don't know discussing um, uh, something um, um, in regards to a specific region, let's say Latin America, you know, do I need to force in perspectives from Asia and and from Europe, or does it actually make some sense, you know, uh, to keep it uh, keep it to Latin America and so on? So. Yeah, my point is like let's believe in the system. Let's believe in the in the percentage points that the working group on workshops uh, evaluations has discussed very extensively. 
uh, and then um, have uh, like good discussions within the issue teams if such proposal makes it through. Elisa. Thank you. Um, just a clarifying question. Um, as the proposals will be anonymized, um, are all, so are the session speakers also anonymized? Ah, you can see this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ah, okay. Then, so then you can see in the proposal if if it has uh, a gender diversity balance, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, and um. <laughs> So this is my personal opinion on uh, gender diversity. Um, it's not just like any other type of diversity. Half of the world is female. Um, so how is it possible that we cannot get a um, like at least one female person in every session to be speaking um, uh, if if we're well, we're born so diverse and that it's not even possible to have that in a panel. I think that's something that we should really, well, be mindful of. I'll leave it up to the group, but yes, I mean, we can have at least one member. I mean, there's this diversity criteria, but at least one member should be female. I mean, or should be of a different gender, put it that way. <laughs> Let's be, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, should be of a different gender. That's uh, yeah. Um, I really wanted to um, just touch upon the themes because our co-chair has to leave at lunchtime. So, but uh, Bruna, please. Just because we we also said yesterday that we would look at um, gender and sustainability as cross-cutting issues to our broader agenda. So I, I didn't really want to end up this discussion yet. Um, maybe what we can do for now in terms of the submission form is that we all can review the form once again and see whether there's any extra recommendations and also in the evaluation part um, that Chris um, should share with us and see whether we would like to, to, to help this um, be improved and, and whether there is space for improvement. Um, I do think that we had, we had a lot of all-male panels last year um, and maybe my, again, I'm going to repeat myself, my request for us will be to have this compromise on not having main sessions that are, that have only males as speakers and female just in the moderator role, because it's also a kind of a, an assistant role. I don't want to be, I don't want to see the strong female in the IGF community in an assistant role. Um, and, and so let's have this kind of compromise now. Let's try to work on the diversity for the high level track, the main sessions and whatever else parts of the, 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 the things we can try to control or try to help improve. And then we reassess the, the workshop submission form and um, evaluation just so we can be better in that. So I don't know, yeah, but I'm, I know I'm a minority here, so. Okay, I, I hear the issues with the gender, but quite honestly, when we tried to put a lot of females on our panel, a lot of them were occupied. So yes, they are out there, but they're just not available. So um, I think with, uh, as Teresa said, you know, we can't put a mandatory on it or numbers on it. Sometimes they're just not available. So what do you want us to do? Thanks, Chingatai, and, and I just want to thank the MAG uh, for giving ourselves some time to really talk through this. It wasn't intended to be a very serious proposal, but more take it as a straw man, just to get a sense of the temperature of the room, how, how MAG members feel about this issue. I haven't actually stated what my personal view is, which is I, I, I personally think gender balance should really just be the absolute minimum standard of you know, diversity or however you want to think about it. Um, if we are put in the position, obviously there's geographical diversity, there is subject matter diversity, those are all baked into the, to the, um, the criteria and the evaluation, which obviously is not to say that gender trumps 
all the other diversity criteria. But I, I would like to encourage MAP members to also examine if you do come up with a proposal that supposedly has very good ideas and very good description and it meets the other diversity markers, but yet cannot for some reason meet the gender one, how would you evaluate it? There are some people in the NRIs, for example, the moment it is an all-male panel, it's a zero for the diversity criteria immediately. And of course, that's up to the individual. I'm not saying that MAC members should take that as a standard, but I am saying that there are varying ways that people are approaching this issue. So it'd be good to know, you know if MAC was ready to be a bit more progressive in this area, but if, if we're not ready yet, that's totally fine. Nothing wrong with that. But I still think that you know we can go some way to at least give a, a stronger signal or message that we take this seriously. Thanks. Teresa. Yes, Joyce, I, I can assure you that for me, that would be zero max one, you know, if other proposals were, uh, uh, sorry, other gender diversity criteria were really uh, excellent. I'm being strict, yes. So I don't want my comment to be misinterpreted in any way. Mm -hmm. Peace. You can have the final word. Thank you, Chigeta. It's interesting and nice to, to hear the different views. Uh, but I think uh, uh, in general, really, we have also this opportunity. I think actually Abdul mentioned it that when we have these proposals and sometimes we have these very good proposal, but they are lacking somewhere, we have the opportunity to usually write them and say, okay, give them comments. Mm -hmm. you know, it's good, but you know, could these areas be improved? So I think that is also something that we're going to use. But yes, we uh, we are working on the on the evaluation form, and for this year, the working group thought that we should put the diversion diversity higher than what we had last year. I think last year we had ten for diversity. This year we have it at twenty because we think it's very important. And like Chris mentioned, that at the very beginning we put an introductory part for the form and diversity is really uh, emphasized, but we, um, we will be happy to, to get your comments and have you make input uh, to the form once they share it. Thank you. Okay, so um, yes, I mean, that's important that there is a form, it is specified, strongly specified there in the form and before we start grading, we also are going to have an online meeting just to make sure that we are, are aligned in the way that we're going to be grading and um, we'll take the various points as well. So I just want to construct the action item right now. So what is the action item? Is that you'll go back, uh, take a another look on the form and the way that the gender diversity requirement is specified and share it with the mag and come back so we are undoing that conditional because we had previously agreed that you would just make the changes and then we would um, post the form but now we're having a comment period and then the form is approved by the MAG. Also, I'm just a bit concerned about the time if we cannot come to some solution such as, I mean, I don't see any problem with saying that there must be at least one person of a different gender on that panel. I think that is a perfectly good, but that's just my opinion. Um, you, you, if, we, if we can have an agreement on that, I think that might. Yes, Joyce. <laughs> I'm actually Chris is first. Uh, Chris, okay. Just to say, I would support that. I think that's a, a bare minimum. I, I think beyond that, the MAG itself, and it's a discussion we will have in the June process. Um, I, yeah, I, I would sort of rate diversity, not just on gender, but on, on, on various things very highly. And, and certainly, um, yeah, that would be the bare minimum. But I think having a bare minimum in the form signals the importance of it, so I'd, I'd certainly yeah. be up for yeah. that. Yeah, it's a bare minimum, but of course it is 20, which is, is doubled from last year. But Bruna? Um, thanks. Um, I, I think it was Joyce first. Oh, okay. oh Joyce. 
<laughs> no, no, just to say that I, I support um, at least one person that's I mean, not a male as um, part of the panel and at a speaking role. Let's make this um, exclusification of at a speaking role because, again, otherwise we're all going to be thrown to the moderator roles. It already happened. So, I mean, that's that's what we're one person of a different gender in the panel as a speaking role. Okay, so we're not we're still on that conditional approval, and of course, it will be uh, the form is going to be shared, and but at least Lewis can do the work, and we can get that form out there as quickly as possible. If, I think that's an agreement, and peace, you're fine with that as well. Joyce, you have something to say? Yes, I do. Oh, I'm so sorry, Joyce. <laughs> Joyce, please. <laughs> I do support in principle. Um, but I, I've also heard from people's comments and mindful that we don't, we also don't want to get trapped in tokenism or appear to be doing that. So it, I'm not going There's back no on my words, perfect solution, but that is clear. I think the concession <laughs> that I could make is that we could say that we strongly encourage at least one person. So we, we make it just flexible for people who aren't quite there yet. Let's just put it that way. Yes. Uh, the um, in fact weakening the requirement to make it that it's strongly encouraged, not a requirement. Yes, Elisa. If the mag wants it to be a requirement, perfectly happy. I'm I just think giving let's some just make it a requirement. I think that is perfectly yeah. reasonable. Okay let's not weaken it. Just make it a requirement. One person of a different gender, full stop, uh, with a speaking role. I think that is. I mean, that's just my opinion, but I'm just trying to drive a consensus here. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to count to six, and if nobody says anything, Amrita, okay. Thank you, Chengitai. Uh, saying one is reducing our position, we should say that there needs to be a gender balance also. As in, why should we just say, okay, if we have one woman, it is great. We want more. Uh, so uh, do we want to but again, the balance dilute is, our position? A balance is, is 50. That's yes, a balance. As in, we aspire for a balance. But um, I mean, okay, um, I'll just be a little bit more forthright here. There's no way that we can have a gender balance of 50 for all. No, panels. as in, Chengita, so if we are bringing, if I we mean, are saying one, doesn't we happen. reduce it. No, no, if we're saying one, we are reducing it. We should say that we aspire for it. We are not saying mandatory. Yes, yeah, but... yes, we can say we, we aspire. Yes, of course, yes. yes, that's fine. We can say we aspire for that. That's fine. And then, uh, okay, so formulation, we aspire for a gender balance um, amongst all panels. Um, there is a requirement of at least one person of a different gender on the panels for the speaking role. So I think that settles it, right? Yeah. Yes, Elisa. And just to really make clear, so if there's no person from a different gender, um, your session will not go through. And if... Well, Let's carry on. Um, and um well maybe we should even consider um that if if the one female person or sorry one non-male person um isn't uh at one point available anymore it should be still mandatory to ensure that you have another mind and a replacement yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. okay peace I think we have consensus here. Thank oh, you, Chair. Yes. Is that okay? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, then. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We do have Giacomo on the line, but I just wanted to quickly just touch upon the um, session themes. We did go back. Um, the co-chair did consult with the... Um, with the capital, uh, with the uh, organizing committee as well of the IGF. And uh, we sat down with, between the secretariat and the co-chairs and we uh, took what was suggested and combined the themes. And we've come up with this formulation, which 
again, may not, we're not looking for perfection here. We're just looking for themes that will en encapsulate the most that we can. And we do understand that it's not perfect. And, um, but here they are. Um, if we can display them, if that's um, possible. So, So for the overarching theme, the internet we want, empowering all people, we think it does encapsulate everything that was being discussed. And um, it is short. It's not too short that it's not that specific. And it's um, and we are about empowering all people. So we think that this is the one that suits. So my question is is there any loud <laughs> objection to this if not then um we'll carry on to the sub themes so i'll just give that a six count okay thank you so oh chris <laughs> almost <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, I'm sorry, and I don't mean to, um, I, I mean, I think it's very, very close. I, I'm, my preference just sort of would be empowering all people for the internet we want, yeah. um, just because I think the way it's currently constructed seem that the, I, I, the connection between the two clauses is a little unclear. This is the internet we want. Also, we're empowering all people. I, I, I a little... I'm not sure the connection between those two concepts is strong enough in the current. So empowering all people for the internet we want, just to basically. That, that would be my um, Yes, but yeah, thank you. Um, thank you, um, Alaji Mbo. Um, actually, I quite agree with him because it um, it sounds really, really, really a better phrase um, and it's very catchy as well. Then the next one is on the sub teams. No, no, we're not. Oh, just a minute. Okay, that's fine. We're but I, I step I, by step. Yes, I completely agree with him. I think it sounds okay. Better. Uh, give me one, two seconds. Yes, is that okay? This one. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> let me just do that. Okay, six count. Oh, uh, sorry, my glasses. Uh, empowering all people. Okay. Um, okay, I'm not touching it. Can somebody do that? Okay. Just a quick question. Yes. It does remind a lot of the Web Foundation initiative from a few years ago, Web We Want. Are we okay with this yeah. confluence? Just to check, just to check the feeling. The I think so, because okay. we have, I mean, this has been a running theme throughout that. Yeah, this yeah. is the internet we want, and this it's okay yeah. if it's, yeah. 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 Okay. So, yes. I don't know if I understand that. Empowering all people for the internet we want. Um, I, I think Does what we, we, I thought, you know, as we said, the internet we want, that is the key thing. So how do we get the internet we want? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I just don't, I don't want to say. Ah, I see what you mean. Yeah. Yes, I see you know, what you mean there. Amrita. Thank you. Um... I, my interpretation, and I may be wrong here, is uh, we want the internet to be open, interoperable, trustworthy, et cetera. So we are having new people coming in and there are um, fragmentation, et cetera, happening. But if we can empower people to understand why we need an open, interoperable, and uh, trustworthy internet, I think we would be at least trying to get somewhere 
uh, where we have the internet which we all desire and not the internet which is balkanized or has all the issues. I, I mean, we will have issues, but we can at least make one step towards progress. So I'm kind of okay with this. And sorry, this is my interpretation. Um, does anybody follow um, that what, um, sorry, I'm getting a mind. <laughs> hey, Carol <laughs> um, is saying, yes. Because yes, empowering all people is also dealing with the multi-stakeholder processes that, um, so that's also what's the underlying message here as well. But if it's just Carol, then we will um, put that aside. But if it's more people, then yes, there's a, um... yes, please. Uh -huh. Yes, thanks a lot. I, I tend to agree with Carol on, on, on that. Um, uh, the reason is that when we look at the current phrase, uh, I mean, the issue of planet is actually messing out of the show, right? Um, right, so I feel the emphasis should be on the internet we want. Uh, I mean, we can have people, but we've noticed that, for instance, if we even consider AI, right, on these uh, GTP-related stuff, the environmental AI footprints that are actually uh, adequately, <laughs> adequately in line with this, right? So when, when we look at empowering people for the internet we want, we seem to have forgotten about the planet and biodiversity, right? Which is actually shown as part of some of the sub teams, right? So it depends on whether we focus in on the living, which is the planet, the people, biodiversity or we focus on only the people. But are people different from the biosphere? Are we yes. part of it? No. <laughs> <laughs> we're part of it. So if you're empowering the people, yeah, it's, uh, we're not all, we're, we're, I mean, we're, it's, um... <laughs> so yes, Chris. Mm. I, I, I think I'm not saying anything terribly original here. I think Amrita actually said it. Quite well, but I, I I think the point, and I, I absolutely hear um, Carol and, and Olivier's comments regarding you know this is not mm -hmm. really engaging with the the issues that we see in the sub themes, but I I, mean, I think there's that's a bit deliberate in terms of if you start to list out the sub the the issues in those sub themes in the overarching theme, you kind of need to list them all, and yes, yeah. that's not helpful. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think what this focuses on is that. What the IGF specifically can do is empower people and help to to achieve all of the the different sub themes. So when we're talking about sustainability in the biosphere, it's empowering people to take more active control and drive towards a, a an internet which is environmentally sustainable and friendly. It, we're also empowering people to steer towards sort of more um, better, better data governance and trust. And, and all of the, the sub themes that we have there. So I, I think I, I like this because it focuses on people and empowerment, which is really what the IGF can do best, I think. Um, again, I'd like to, sorry for this, if you could keep your intervention short, um, Bruna. Short and in the chat already as well. I just say, I'm just saying that, sorry, with empowering of people, we've also been acknowledging that a lot of us don't have access to the internet or these discussions. So it's kind of like, what's important? What's What do we want first? Like, which is bring more people to the discussions, that's all. Okay, great. Uh, Joyce? Thanks very much, Chris and, and others uh, who've spoken up on this. Um, there is a distinction between the two. Um, the first one I think really does emphasize it's empowering people for the internet. Right. But the second one is talking about the, the cause and effect is a bit different. So the second one is really we what is the internet that we are aspiring to? And at least the way I read it is that the internet we want is one that empowers all people. So the, the slightly different um, you know, in, in its composition. Um, having said that, I, I like both, but my preference is actually for the second one, just because I think it's punchier. Thanks. 
um, um, thank you. Um, just was two points, two small points. One is that, is it empowering all people or the internet that we want or by the internet that we want? Uh, and, and the second one, we should not forget um, the marketing aspect of this statement. So this, this will be branded and everyone, we need something that's easy to understand. And with that, I'll go with the second option. Uh, second options. Um, I think I would also go with the second option because I think in the first one, it's like uh, the internet we want is already defined. And um, I think the second one leaves room for discussion of the internet we want and to achieve it by empowering all people. I think I would also like to support and um, show my interest and uh, in number two, because I think the internet we want and then empowering people, if we are not empowered to use, to engage, you know, then it makes no sense. But I think second one is just perfect. And the internet we want, empowering all Thank you. Uh, okay, so I'm going to make a proposal. Unless there is really, really, uh, I'll ask Chris and to if they could live with the second one. I'm, I'm just going to make a very super brief comment. The internet we want empowering all people implies the internet we want empowers people. So that's quite a different context than we're empowering people to build the internet we want. So we're, we're suggesting with the second one that the internet we want would empower people. Now, I'm not sure that's, but yeah, I, I, it, as I say, it's just quite a different um, message, I think. So you're not, uh, I did ask a question. That, sorry, that that was not really helpful. It, it, I think just as long as if we understand that. Now, I, I'm still very prefer the first one. Um, but I, but can you live with the second one? Um, no, yeah, I'm not going to die. <laughs> yeah, no, I can live with that. Sorry, uh, could I just jump in quickly? Yes. <laughs> Perhaps we could ask the co-chairs, um, you know, because the internet... Yeah, no, that was my next was, We seem you know, to be at a thing then. Can we just... Could we ask for an the executive behind, decision? You know, of, why, why that was decided <laughs> as an option. Thanks. Uh, so I've got two things. Since we're at an impasse, and I don't think it, nobody... one option is yes we can get an explanation another option is empowering us to make a decision since they seem <laughs> but let's carry on the discussion yes <laughs> yeah yeah you know you know you know the means the means are very different actually mm -hmm. on the first one we it's actually assuming that we know the internet that we want and then we want to empower the people now on the second one um uh, it seems we are not so sure, sure of the kind of internet we want, but then we want to empower people. And that's the reason why I still want to stick to the first one. That's the reason you want to stick to the first, first, one, first yeah. one? First one, yeah. So, okay, but, okay, fine. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, uh, this is my, my first intervention. I've just been following the discussions and, and this was raised earlier in the week to some extent so had a little bit of time to chew on it and and I you know I don't really want to say anything because I think there's a lot of context to, in terms of why this was um, phrased in a particular way but to me from from the technical community or business community it's the internet that is empowering and and that's the sort of message we should get back if we have a good internet or an internet that is fulfill certain um, goals, that will empower people. And in that light, I would say the second option is probably speaks to that better than the first one. Um, that's just the way I'd view it. I think it's a bit awkward, but the second one is probably more in line with what I would think. And that's also another comment I wanted to make. It may have a slightly different meaning to people with English as a first language, and it may be have uh, so they can tell the nuances, but our audience is not primarily those with expert level English, right? So our importance, <laughs> hear me out, <laughs> that's a little. 
<laughs> you may not buy it, but yes, um, what's important is um, what the majority of the people get out of that title, correct? Yes. Um, I don't know, I mean, Our co-chair says that the community can live with either of them, but if he had to choose, he would choose the second one. But um, I, so we do have a sort of an impasse here. I mean, those two are fine. We don't want to have a vote and I, my opinion, oh. <laughs> I'll say my usual thing, I'm the Secretariat. <laughs> yes, Elisa. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I mean, in the end, I could live with both, um, just to make that clear. But what I find interesting is um, that both options have been explained in exactly the same way and exactly the opposite way. So some people say with, with the first one, it's um, we're still um, we're empowering people um, to um, to use the internet we want, and we're already sure of what type of internet we want. And we've I've heard people saying, "Well, we're not sure so sure of what type of internet we want." Um, and the same counts for the other one. Um, and uh, so I think it's it's either way. It could it could go either way. Um, yeah. Um, and. I would though want to make clear that there is no consensus of what type of internet we want. If there would be consensus, then writing the GDC and any other documents on internet, internet governance would be super, super, super easy. Yeah, there's no consensus for the internet we want, that is uh, correct. Yeah, to answer your question, what I'm hearing here is that the, if, I talk, if I want to talk about the majority feeling, I'm hearing a majority feeling actually for the second one. I might be mistaken, but that's what I'm hearing is that there is a preference for the second one. Um, yes, Chris. I'm hearing that too. So I'm going to make a last stand for the second one, for the first one. Yeah. Just, and then and then I can be disregarded. Um, I, I, I don't think that the first one implies that we already know what the internet we want is. I think by empowering people to have that discussion, we we define what the internet we want is, rather than a big tech company defining what the internet is for us. We're empowering people to take part in that discussion. And I think that's what I see the IGF about. Now, the second one is quite a political statement, which from my personal politics, I'm absolutely for. The internet is something that should empower people. Um, but that's that it's a, it's quite a specific message um, and it's not the same message as this is what the IGF can do it's saying the internet we want is one that empowers all people and that, as I say I'm certainly on board with that that message I think it absolutely the internet absolutely should empower all people um but it but it, it should also do a lot more than that um and so that I, I'm I feel it's a little bit limiting um in that sense but I, I can live with 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 it. But I, yeah, as I said, I wanted to make a at least a last stand here. Sorry, Navidad, Mac member. I would like to support the number two because all that they have implemented, and because I consider that the message is more directly in this subject. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Let me make another attempt. I am going with number two because that is what I'm hearing. So I'm counting to six. Okay. So we're going to go with number two. We're going to go with number two. Thank you very much for your understanding and the compromise that you've made. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> 
I know it's lunchtime, but let's just see what the feeling is on the um, sub themes. Uh, first of all, let's just take them in all its entirety because we have understood that the purpose of the sub themes is also as a way to structure the uh, meeting and also to um, structure the outputs that we are going for. Again, with these, they may not be perfect, but we are also going to have um, blurbs underneath each one of them explaining exactly, uh, well, broadly explaining, not specifically explaining, of course, uh, what we mean by them. But um, I won't go through them one by one, but let me just see how people feel about them first to see. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, uh, I had a comment on the first one. Was there a specific maybe reason behind AI and new technologies instead of emerging technologies? Mm. I'm just looking at my team. Um, not particularly. Um, I mean, we can put... I would, okay, yes, let's go with emerging because new means they were recent, but there are some technologies that have been around for 40 years, but are now just emerging to the fore. So I would go with emerging then. Mm -hmm. Yes, Bruna. First of all, I think we, at, I was going to comment on the number, the quantity. It seems you have gone a little bit over what we discussed yesterday. I think we were going towards, I don't know, five or six, and we seem to have, we have seven now. So there's one comment and fragmentation is being left out. So I, I wouldn't know where to add fragmentation to. Is it global digital governance and digital cooperation or somewhere else? Because I think there were, there was some level of support for leaving fragmentation in as, as one of the sub themes. Um, just so we don't forget about that. Thanks, Jane Pat. Oh, sorry, global digital governments, yes. Mm. And we can, again, as I said, we can put that under the blurb just to make sure that people understand that. Yes. Just a follow-up comment, because I think um, Adam is not here, but I, I think he yesterday he was clearly against us having the digital governance or, or governance debate on this. So I, I would maybe agree with him and then just leave it digital cooperation and avoiding fragmentation and or like um, avoiding for internet fragmentation, something like that, just so we could have both. Uh, so you're proposing deleting global digital governance? Not a suggestion yet, just, a, just bringing us back to the discussion from yesterday because Chris is raising the flag in my face. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I'll be very quick. No, my, my suggestion there would, would be to just say global digital cooperation, actually. Yeah. Joyce Chen Mac, yes, plus one. I was going to say exactly that. Let's just make it global digital cooperation. Um, anybody has got a counterpoint? Okay, let's change it then. Yes, Joyce. Thanks very much, Chengatai. And having done this, I do still want to push back to say that seven sub themes really is a lot. Um, and just so that the MAG, especially the new members, understand what this means for us, it is that we would need to have seven groups to schedule and arrange seven main sessions. So that's, you know, that's the implication as well. If we have seven sub-themes, we would need to arrange and organize seven main sessions. And when we did five, we were already struggling. 
that's just the reality. So I very much encourage us to think if we could streamline or perhaps reduce the sub themes um, a bit more. Thanks. I mean, this, yes. Um, it does not necessarily follow that we would have the seven, but we can even for the uh, main sessions, we can combine and make them more streamlined. Um, the idea behind this is also taking from Adam's idea is that we, we, we had a great deal of difficulty in previous where we had workshops, they didn't know where they would be um, falling under. And this is an effort to structure um, the proposal, the input of the proposals and also the outputs. But um, we can combine the main sessions uh, as we see for, as we see the input that's coming in because we might have only five under one theme and then we can see what we can do with that. So we could also leave it to the um, community to show us which way to go on that. If I might just react directly yeah. mm -hmm. with you, um, if, if that is the consensus amongst the MAG that we don't have to directly link main sessions with the sub themes and we can get creative about the topics, I'm absolutely fine with keeping seven. Oh yes, and I'm also want to underline just because we did something last year or even we've did something since the beginning, it doesn't mean we have to do it exactly the same way. Um, we, we are here to improve continual improvement and experimentation, which may not be an improvement, but at least we tried it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Merit as well, since she hasn't spoken, but mm -hmm. Elisa, since I called uh, uh, Mer Merit, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, just uh, briefly. I do think it's um, seven is a lot. I think there's been a lot of calls for focus, especially on the from the private sector side. Um, and and uh, now we have a tendency. I mean, the trend is going upwards again. Um, whether that will have a significance or not, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not sure. But for me, this says that we have absolutely no idea what our priorities, and we are going to have a lot of lovely little discussions, uh, a bit all over the place, and that the messages and the outcomes will be very high level and and superficial, and not really serving the purpose to attract more uh, people to this uh, forum, etc. I'm, I'm being a little bit maybe harsh here but that's that's what he says to me and i think that there are um, easy things here that we could do for example the bullet uh two and three i think that could all go under trust uh trustworthy internet or trusted internet or um what have you um and and just that would streamline a bit because now it's really like um long menu of of many many different things um, and of course, I understand that men, all of these are important in a way, but I just think that maybe that gives a little bit the wrong message. Thanks. Okay. Elisa, then uh, I don't know who was first, Bruna mm -hmm. or uh, Abdullah Rim. Um, let me, okay, I'll just go to you and then go. So Elisa, please. Oh, and Carol, yes. Elisa, uh, first. Um, on a global digital corporation, it, it it sounds quite a lot like the global digital compact to me. Um, and I fear that if you would leave that as a sub theme that that people who have submitted anything to the GDC um, would see that as the location to to submit basically any proposal. Um, so to me, the Global Digital Corporation, it doesn't say that much if you look at all the other themes, digital device and inclusion. Um, yeah, so I, I have issues with that one because it's just unclear to me what, what, what's meant with it. Um, and um, not completely sure what Marit said about trust, trust, trustworthy or trusted internet. Um, I, I I would like to see that on screen, what it exactly was uh, before. She, I... she was saying, correct me if I'm wrong, that 
thrust can um, replace bullets two and three. Okay. And um, so with your global digital cooperation, are you saying that we should go back to the uh, original? And I also like to remind, remember, these aren't just going to be standing alone. There is going to be an explanatory um, paragraph under each one of them for those people who are um, inputting. Sorry, by now my mind has kind of become a sieve. Yes. Um, so could you, in that case, put back the previous text? Um, sorry, we've been meeting for three and a half hours now. We, we can stop. take a break, as I said. Uh, yeah, but I'm, I'm not sure about the host country when they have to leave. So now they have to leave at 2.30. Okay, um, Bruno, then Carol. Oh, no, 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 sorry. It was Abdullah first, yes, and Carol, and um, Bruno. Yeah, thank you. I'm just I'm thinking about the storyline of, of mm -hmm. sub theme. In my, my opinion, that's the sub theme should answer the main theme or as a continuation of the sub main theme. So the internet, we want empowering all people by uh, mm -hmm. AI, emerging technology, it does not click with me. You need, you need, probably we need branding themes in between the sub theme and, and, and the main theme so if we look to the example of the trustworthy so the internet we want empowering all people by providing trustworthy internet and that under that could, could might be some some technical terms and technical teams so i think probably in awarding uh, we need to make sure that we have we have a continuation of the storyline for for normal people ordinary people mm -hmm. to to understand it. so thank you Carol. Okay, so two things after what Abdallah said. Um, the first thing is that you may have a scheduling nightmare if seven of those things are done, then you're gonna have two main sessions on a day. It was a it was kind of a challenge last time, it's just a four. Okay. So you have day zero and then you have four days. So who's gonna double up? Uh, with main sessions, um, so just that, um, and I agree that maybe we can change the the data governance, the word governance, um, to more match the theme. Um, I think um, something about protection and trust, and that is really what people want to know. That when I go on the internet, I can trust it. I can feel protected about my data. Um, Governance, you have to explain to people. Oh, sorry, one more thing. And um, governance with cybersecurity and crime. And no, I don't think that. They're... So, okay. Oh, one thing I've noticed is that we are um, hopping back and forth. I think we should maybe at attack one and then spent that and then go to the next. Um, so at the moment, let's just talk about um, the sub themes um, two and three. Maybe that would be a better way of doing it. And your suggestion is trust, uh, just trust. Yeah, I, I agree with the, the trust. I don't agree that trust and cybersecurity, cybercrime and online safety goes together. Um, okay. Uh, yes, Bruno. <laughs> yeah, speed up. Uh, thanks, I wanted to- Tag myself out soon. <laughs> so. Thanks a lot. I wanted to make a comment on the third point, data governance and trust. I'm also looking at the current uh, developments and also obviously future trends around data governance. Um, it's too broad a term. Um, I'll 
prefer, in my opinion, to start looking at responsible data stewardship and reuse of data, right? Uh, so that is quite specific, responsible data stewardship and reuse of data. And we could see that during the COVID crisis where you could see a lot of data collaborative, private sector, uh, reusing data for public good, you know, sharing data and all those stuff. And uh, even when we look at the current generative AI tools that are currently being done, uh, it's obviously reusing data from different, different sources. So how do we promote the responsible reuse of data, right? So I'm looking at it more, much more of responsible data stewardship, so empowering people. So responsible data stewardship and reuse of data which will be in line with the uh, global theme. Thanks. Oh, thank you. I'm not too sure about the word count, but one of the reasons is remember these things go on banners as well. <laughs> so we shouldn't make them essays. Um, it has to be shorter. Um, yes, Bruno. Thank you. Two suggestions for joining two and three would be to sum it up in data, maybe data security and trust. Um, it's simpler, it's more general. It would allow for people to have their own interpretations on whether we're talking about data flows or we're talking about, um, I don't know, cyber warfare. I am completely against putting together cyber warfare and digital governance or cooperation together because these are two complete different worlds. I know cooperation is, is one part or one aspect of that, but like it's not even the same stakeholders in the end of the day. One talks to NATO and other parts of the world and, and the other assumes civil society has a say in the discussion. discussion. So it's it's just for us to be aware of that. And on the, the digital governance and cooperation, I would go with maybe, I don't know, digital cooperation and avoiding internet fragmentation again, because I think it would be good to kind of have some mention of the topic there, just for us to, I know, I know, yeah, but just to put this on the record. to propose Bruna's uh, suggestion, data, comma, security, and trust to replace those two. And the chairs agree. And yes, Karina. <laughs> Sorry, you can't repeat. I can hear you. Um, uh, can you write it out? Mm -hmm. Data, comma, security, and trust as one basket. And we can have a comma before the security end, I think, maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was a question because my. Yeah. Uh, Two and three, and then we have one um, basket, and we achieve two. Yes, Carol. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, um, being a technical person, those things mean totally different things. They're totally different. Um, cybersecurity, cybercrime, and um, online safety. They, they they have different connotations. When I talk about cybersecurity, I'm talking about access to, to systems. I'm talking about access to buildings, access to this, that, and the next. So it's a totally different connotation than talking about data. Uh, yes, data is involved, but they don't need to be all in the same. You can have workshops 
just about some aspect along the line of data and or you can have a data and trust or just another aspect when I'm saying that's going to make that basket very huge because you're going to have people just proposals just talking about data then you're going to have proposals just talking about cyber security and cyber crime okay it's going to be a huge basket uh Joyce you're agreeing I suppose thanks Chingatai yes Joyce Chen member exactly um, the experience we had, I think, two years ago when, when we combined data and cybersecurity together was that we had very different proposals purely on data and then purely on cybersecurity. And it it just did not make sense. Like there were very few proposals that actually took data protection and security as two sides of the same coin. And so I think that's why later on we decided to just split it up. Um, just so to have better clarity. I think we Mac probably has to revisit what the sub-themes are for. If this is just to help people who are submitting proposals to better understand which sub-theme they should be submitting their, and dropping their proposals in so that Mac members will have an easier time as well arranging ourselves and having properly focused proposals within that theme. I think it works even if we have a longer list. It's just to help people know where they're supposed to be. And we don't end up with proposals that are talking about some data or whatever, but then actually it's really talking about human rights or you know, that sort of thing. So if it's just for that purpose, I think it's fine. Um, even if we have more than we intended. Especially since anyway, we've just mentioned before that the main sessions are not tied to the sub themes. Yes. You can mm -hmm. be the main sessions would then be how the Mac expresses our understanding of the overarching theme, like which topics we feel are the ones that better express the internet we want empowering all people. Yes. Uh, thank you, Joyce. Yes. So totally 100 percent agree with your last statement there. And what I'm getting from your first part of your statement is that there is no formulation that basically you and Carol will agree where we were going to be having security and data in the same um, point because they are two different things. So um, the exercise of trying to reduce um, the themes at least for these two is basically mute. We shouldn't actually be trying to go down this road, but um, yes. Um, I actually had uh, quite a different idea is, um, why can data be moved to AI and emerging technologies as a lot of themes might overlap? So AI, emerging technologies, data, and trust, can we trust these emerging technologies? And where would we have trust? So security and trust be its own, and then data, AI, and emerging technologies. Bruna? And then we'll have one. No, yeah, I was just going to mention that, like, again, going to Joyce's point, like, what is the actual, like, what's the goal of these themes? Because we are already discussing that this is not going to translate into the main sessions. Yes. So we're looking exclusively into baskets for workshop evaluation. Yes. Generally. And also, um, Kind of the like schedule, the, yeah, the, the stewarding of the, the discussion generally, yes. The uh -huh. But, um, the point is that we can't have it all because, like, if you're gonna keep on saying, like, oh, this point is very specific, it doesn't it's not part of the trust discussion, or um, the other topic is not part of that discussion, we're just gonna keep on making this, this bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And there's a little bit of a trade off we need to make here. My, my suggestion would be, like, let's see which topics are the most like complicated or dense to evaluate. So if we have an agreement that human rights is too complicated or cybersecurity has a lot of um, implications in the broader discussions and they cannot be together, then it's, it's kind of a, a more objective um, discussion to this instead of saying that um, maybe. So you want the discussion now or do you want to have the inputs and then we can 
reformulate the tracks? We can try to reformulate it later and, and see how if it we, works. My point is just that if we keep on adding like very specific points, this it is this is never gonna stop growing. Well, yes. Yes. <laughs> That's why, yes. I mean, at the very beginning we said this is not perfect by any means, but it's something that we can work with. Um if we want to um revert to that and have something that we can work with because um Marcus always used to say that perfection is the enemy of the good you, you know so we shouldn't always be aiming for that perfection because we'll never get anywhere when mm -hmm. okay yes well uh, thank you Valtonato is ob observer I'm looking at this list for us some time now and we are talking about empowering people that's been stressed a couple of times already and I think we could boil this down to four themes and that's just of course a suggestion but we could look at AI and emerging technology cybersecurity etc and data governance all under the word trustworthy and trustworthy empowers people and then you can explain the blurb that people can do something on cybersecurity on data and yes you will have individual suggestions and workshop proposals from in the individual groups that have an interest in the topic but perhaps you will get a more overview as well another option is to do emerging technologies and then trustworthy with number two and three and i think that there's the so what is it four five and six if you find the right word and i'm bending my mind around it and i'm not finding it but there's a word for those three because it has to do with access with with rights on the internet and that is about empowering all these three are about empowering so we should find the right word and you connect all three and then we have the last one which sort of stands apart and which came on board yesterday which remains up apart in my in my mind so we could have three or four tracks if we write the blurb right of you sorry not me with you write the blurb right so that's just as a suggestion because it's about empowering people and trustworthiness is empowering people Access or whatever we call it empowers people and sustainability is our future, our common future. So yeah, I see that. I see where you're coming from, uh Walt. Um I'm kind of with I'm I'm not I mean, of course it's up to the mag, but I personally am not I don't think that we should like Chris says burn it all down now and start again because you know we're gonna it's gonna go mm -hmm. um so I would be very hesitant to do that but Chris and um then Joyce um, I'm gonna come back a bit to a point I was making yesterday um which is that I I mean alongside obviously um scheduling and helping people to understand where how what how their workshop should fit I certainly based on this year's experience last sorry last year's experience one of the primary uses of these themes was in writing the messages that come out and i think if we start as we start combining things into you know whether it's trust and ai and emerging, we have to I, I think it would be useful for us to stop and think okay are we going to be able to pull together a cohesive concise set of messages that covers all of these areas that we've put together under a theme. So I, I think, and I, I, in response a bit to what Marit was saying earlier about lack of focus, I actually think having a, a larger group of quite distinct, clearly sort of encapsulated themes could help us in having more focused outputs because we can produce outputs that really sort of speak to that point without sort of having to try and cover it. So for instance, and uh, Neil's point there in the, the chat about sustainability, economy and environment being a very broad um, catch-all. I think I agree with that. I think I, for me, I think the inclusion of economy in there takes the focus away. I, I can understand why we would like to sort of discuss economic impacts or economic concerns, but I think sustainability and the environment were really the the core theme that we were looking to address there and I think if we add economy 
in that particular theme, it blows out into something very broad. And if I think about what would be the messages, what would be the bullet point messages for sustainability, economy, environment? I mean, if you try to break it, if you try to get it down to sort of five or six key points, they would be all over the shop. <laughs> um, there wouldn't really be a cohesive message there. And I think that's the real danger when we talk about lack of focus is that the messages that come out might seem like they're trying to cover everything when in fact they really need to engage quite precisely with the the themes that we've laid out. Yes, because I tend to agree with you. And I also think that we can also revisit when we have all the inputs and see whether or not we should um, do some slight adjustment. But yes, I mean, if we want our outputs to be um, useful, to some other processes, I think we do need um, this thing so that we know exactly where. Um, people know exactly what to pick up to read and they don't have to start weeding out things uh, and messages. But let's carry on. Yes, Joyce. Thanks, Chingatai. And um, I support what Chris has said. Um, and in thinking about you know, the IGF messages, and how exactly we are to be precise. Um, I can share a bit about the experience of the APRIGF and also expand on what Watt has said, which is that we have experimented with both, which is the system that we use now is we use just singular words with very broad categories. And we only have three sub themes for the entire APRIGF. The reasoning behind it for us was that we were trying to encourage cross-cutting proposals and issues. And so we were not thinking about precision as such. We were trying to get, you know, organizers to be a bit more creative. So that was the, you know, why we went with that approach as opposed to the way that we're doing now, which is listing everything out. Um, the difficulty that we've observed is that people don't know where to go when submitting their proposals. It's very confusing. Yes, you can read the description, but people are still going to misunderstand or misinterpret um, what we're trying to achieve. And then when it came to actually doing the APRIGF, um, the, the, the synthesis document, again, we had that problem because we only had three buckets and we ended up having to have subheadings of each bucket anyway. So it works for the APRIGF because we have a different purpose in mind and we will keep probably continue to use that, but the scale is much smaller. We're only dealing with like 100 plus proposals and trying to whittle it down. But at the scale of the IGF, it's going to be very difficult um, because we're getting so many proposals in. Just in terms of organization, I think it's better to have clarity of each sub-theme and where people should go. But then the question that I'd like to open up to the MAC to consider is how would we deal with cross-cutting proposals or how could we then encourage people to think creatively across themes and whether or not if we are being so precise, we are actually kind of limiting, you know, what they can put in. If that's not really an issue, then that's fine. But I think it's also worth just thinking about it. If there are no, um, yes, we can think about it. Again, as I said, uh, one proposal is that we keep these themes as working themes. Um, we can see whether or not we need to adjust them when the submissions um, come in. We've had issues in the past, yes, where We've had um, proposals who, which didn't, um, which evaluators didn't think fit in that basket. And that was also, I think, when we had fewer themes. I think the, so yes, I um, hear and I do understand what Joyce is saying. So um, I would propose, We keep these themes with the understanding that we're going to be revisiting them. The workshop evaluation group is this is another point for you to um, consider. 
Joyce's question on um, cross-cutting proposals. I think a solution can be uh, made. I think it's we either identify them beforehand or or something, but I'm sure we can find a solution and then we revisit it and we fully understand that it just doesn't mean because it's a theme, it is a main session. No, these are more of um, structural tools so that uh, we can get through the schedule and also get through the outputs. But Bruna. Mm -hmm. Question, um, should we still expect uh... Reduce um, to reduce the list or not? Are we like are we look? Uh, we're keeping it as is right now, but are we still discussing having five instead of seven um, for the near future? My um, suggestion is that we keep it as it is, and then we also see, and then we can revisit when the inputs come in. Yeah. Uh, because, well, for instance, we had environment last time, and the, the inputs that came in it was debatable whether or not that should be a track. Yeah. So we can do it that way so that we're not presupposing things and we're actually reacting to what we are receiving from the community. And just as, uh, so we are using this for the submission form, this list. Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Mm. Okay. Yes, Karen. Sorry, I just wanted to make a comment. By the way, but, so, we gave you what you wanted. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I hope it's not I'm going to be greedy. I'm going to be greedy. No, um, just because you, you spoke about the environment um, and uh, same thing, what going back to Abdullah, maybe I want to suggest, only suggest that the last bullet, sustainability, economy, and environment be changed to. Um, something that's more prevalent now, something called the um, triple bottom line, and to make it a bit more catchy, it's now people, um, planet, and prosperity. Just a suggestion. <laughs> um, it's called the triple P. Okay. Is that a um, colloquial term now? It's a... Uh... It's becoming one, especially in the business world. They're now trying to do corporate um, social responsibility, and um, it's becoming a big part of. Can you of, just put that now. down? Um, you can put it in another color, and then we'll see how it looks and what people think. So uh, just comments on changing the last bullet to people, planet, and prosperity. And we're just discussing that. Well, just because if in the list, then it's best for us to keep the list and not rediscuss. Otherwise, I mean, there's still like fragmentation that's not there. A lot of other uh, topics. Okay. Like, yeah, so. I get your point. Any other comment? Yes. I'm Neil Dundas, MAG member. Um, again, I'm <clears throat> new to this, so please excuse me if I don't have the full context of what this is actually meant to do. But from what I understand, what Joyce said, it's it's there to invite proposals based on these sub-themes. Um, and that doesn't mean that that's going to be the, those are going to be the final sessions or anything like that. It's it's more just to collect different proposals. And it really serves as a way for for us to tell people what, where we want them to focus, what sort of content and discussion we want them to focus on. So if they do submit something that is maybe a, a hybrid of a number of these themes, maybe this list could also then evolve to include a combination or a hybrid option so that people could self-classify their proposals and say it cuts across here and yeah, it's a combination of different themes. So that's going to be a practical way of using this list. Um, so that's one way of doing it. Um, yeah, and and my my comment on the on the chat still stands. I think if you throw the the net very wide, like that last point, even with the um, proposed amendment, it's a very very wide catch-all net, and you will get almost everything that doesn't fit into any of the others fitting into that last theme. Um, so it doesn't really help you with your classification or your at the end of the day. So maybe you want to change that rather to some sort of combination and allow people to 
say, well, it touches on this and this point. It's a combination of these different themes. That's just practically a way I would go about this for in the context of how you're going to use it. Joyce. Thanks, Chengatai, and thanks, Carol, for making the suggestion. I, I always like catchy terms. <laughs> I'm a very superficial person. Um, but I, I do agree. Um, I think planet and prosperity probably isn't covered because we can pass it as economy and environment. That's okay. But people might be a bit difficult for, for organizers to understand because then it might seem very similar to human rights, maybe. Um, or people, the people one, people might take it as gender and you for, so I'm trying to imagine what kind of sessions would fall under the final one. And it, the final one might just be a little bit too broad um, with people, planet and prosperity. Although I really like it. And I, I like that it's current and, you know, it's being used now. So what I'm getting is that they, isn't a support to change it to um, people, planet, and prosperity at the present moment in time. And um, we still have to look at the last bullet point to see whether or not it's um, it can be more focused a little bit. Or, or Neil, you were saying make it a catch-all or make it a cross, Cutting basket. Uh, can you just... Yeah. Um. Uh, again, I was. Uh, if you look, if you read this, you can fit any topic under this. And is that the intention of what the Mag wants to do? It wants to invite any conceivable proposal because you could probably fit them under any of uh, some of these categories, at least one of them. If you want to be focused and you want the the proposals to come in on certain focus points, um, and you don't necessarily want a catch-all component to it where you could something that's outside of those focus points um, then maybe you can introduce another category where people can self-classify and say it cuts over a number of these sub themes and that would be an interesting submission so you're almost steering them away from trying to submit something too general and forcing them into self-classifying into how this proposal that they're putting in speaks to the focus points that you want them to speak to even if they if it's a if it's a combination of, of themes uh neil i'll can I give you some minutes to think on a specific wording? <laughs> it would be an option combination, explain. Okay. Combination of the above points, explain. Okay. Uh, um, Elisa? Thank you, uh, Um So as we are, again, debating the, um, the sub-themes, um, on the last one, it says, uh, sustainability, economy, and environment. Um, I, I would at least prefer to have um, environment and sustainability um, next to each other, because economy is like something else, and then you're going back to the more sustainable environment issue. Um, and I'm not really sure of the necessity of economy in here, because it, it doesn't really say anything. So if it were me, I, I'd, I'd go for sustainability and environment or environment and sustainability, because I think that sounds better. Um, OK, can we um, just hearing you guys, um, would it be OK if we removed economy? I mean, no. <laughs> OK. Bruna. Okay, it's down. Joyce. Yeah, no, just no, um, again, the, if we change to planet, I think we're going to end up having like proposals about interplanetary stuff that might be a little misleading or I don't know, quantic. Um, no, people, planet, internet. and prosperity is gone. Yeah, that's okay. That's, that's we just deleted. Uh, we're not considering it anymore. Although we agreed that we were not going to do this discussion, we're doing it. Um, economy. <laughs> I mean, yes, <laughs> economy is a huge part of a lot of the other discussions that are there. If you discuss data economy, it's on the data governance and trust part. If you discuss cybersecurity, that could also be an economical aspect to that. I dropped my charger for the 11th time today, so it's fine. Um, 
I, yeah, I just, I would just focus on the environmental and sustainability conversation as well, because it's our agreement from yesterday that was the one topic of discussion that was not fully envisioned on the list. And that was also a cross-cutting discussion. So there was no discussion about economy yesterday. Okay. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Carol, can we put economy in the uh, blurb at the bottom explaining? Instead of putting it at, at the top in the title, putting it in the blurb explaining what we mean, uh, that we are also welcoming. Joyce? Sure. Yes, sure. Um, okay, great. So we're going to remove economy from the top and put it in the blurb. Joy, uh, if nobody's got any other objections, we'll make this list normal. We'll, we'll I'll, I'll give a six count, but jo Joyce, you have the last word. <laughs> Thanks, Shingatai. I'm not sure about the last word. Um, I just wanted to make a bit of an explanation of what I think economy was trying to, why it's there. And I think, for example, in Asia Pacific, um, we're very sort of economy and work minded in that sense. And so when we see the word, people would typically think about the digital economy or um, future of work, um, those sorts of themes. So instead of dropping the word economy entirely, perhaps we could put it somewhere where it better fits rather than in sustainability and environment, which I agree should be separate. Maybe we can just have digital divides, inclusion and economy. You know, yeah. <laughs> we have a lot. <laughs> but, but my point is that reflexive reaction there. There's a, mm -hmm. there's a reason that um, economy is there is for people who. You know, no, but I think the economy there was meaning green economy, sustainability as part of the. Is it a virtuous circle? I can't remember what the, exactly the, the the phrase is. Yeah, but as part of a virtuous circle, not as you were describing it. That's why economy was there. Um, and that's the aspect of economy that we want. We don't want the full. Uh, yes, Maria Liz. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry. Uh, I mean, I, I had the immediate reaction uh, um, on that because um, um, the idea that uh, we're talking about divides only because of economic purposes to me is 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 a bit. Oh no, we're not um, going to touch that. Don't worry. Yeah, so uh, we're not touching thinking... anything above the sustainability and environment. That's the only thing that's in debate now. Yeah, um, but but the, but the idea of putting economy together with digital divide and inclusion that, that's not. You know the it, the idea of including people in information ecosystems is for the human rights of access to information or freedom of expression and so on and so forth. And you know, it's like the, the purpose not is not necessary, you know, not to transform them into economic agents, you know, in, in, in that sense. You know, so I, I think that that association is a bit complicated. So yeah. that that's why, sorry, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> for the immediate uh, uh, flag raise, you know, thank you. So if it means circular economy, then I'm fine to have it there as well in the title, but I think, well, if you have sustainability and environment, um, still I would say environment and sustainability, but um, if you have those two words there, I'm happy to to include circular economy because that's also more in the green field. But if if, if you're talking just like economy, it could also be industrial. And, no, it's uh, circular like, economy. Yeah, so th then either clarify it in the title or leave it out. That would be my suggestion. Okay, Bruna. We can clarify this point on the paragraph that describes the track. It's a way of trying to overcome that. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. My my point was just again same question I did at the beginning. Where would I submit a workshop on fragmentation? It's that is my question about because it was a theme last year. It's not on this list right now. It's part of the discussions. Um, we locked the list. I'm respecting that. So my question is, where? Uh, isn't it would be uh, digital governance? Yeah. Yeah. What's the suggestion to the digital governance and fragmentation? To mention it on the on, as a topic, because we still have the PNIF. It's still part of our discussions. It's one of the deep dive like topics related to deep dives and and PNIF is kind of, um. 
I don't know what people think, but um, yes, Chris. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think I'm always a bit too minds about internet uh, internet fragmentation discussions, but it, it does make sense given that it was uh, there last year, um, and I think it probably does fit into that um, that theme. I mean, I, it I could would... also go like economy into the well. I mean, it could. Work. And also remember that the PNN is going to get a session as well. So well, that's that's I think the question. I, yeah, I I think if we included internet fragmentation in the theme, we would have. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I don't speak for the NIF, but I would certainly. I, I think it wasn't from my perspective ideal last time when we had PNIF's main session followed immediately by his main session on avoiding internet fragmentation. I think we would want to avoid something like that this time because I think. It was a little too. Uh, okay, let me ask somebody who hasn't a vested interest. <laughs> uh, do we have any comments on any opinions on that? Yes, Elisa. Um, I I would change cooperation and fragmentation in this. Um, um, sub theme. So then you would have global digital governance and fragmentation, uh, and avoid sorry, in, avoid internet. No, no, avoid fragmentation. Yeah, because it it makes sense to to refer back to what it, what was really a very well important part of of the IGF last year yes Neil um again I, I I think maybe the message that I was saying earlier got lost because the purpose of this list mm -hmm. is to elicit proposals mm -hmm. so, and if it's not going to equate to uh, it's not necessarily going to equate to the sessions mm -hmm. at the IGF then you can have 10 20 on the list yeah inviting people to give you focused proposals on those specific points and then when you get all the proposals you can decide how you want to combine them together and how you want to present that in sessions um, why why is there this focus or this um, attempt to get focus on certain areas and then we throw in a general component at the end because we're not achieving focus in terms of what we're asking uh, from proposals we were we're trying to be focused on certain points and and very unfocused on the last point because it's anyone can submit anything under that. Under sustainability, you could put fragmentation. Oh, we are uh we're past the last one, and now we just no, but I mean, if you want something on fragmentation, make your point by itself and invite proposals on fragmentation. No, no, that, that, that's what I'm trying. I'm trying to get some support for that that is not coming from the uh PNI. If there's other views that are supporting that that are not coming from the PNI, then uh, we can consider it. Otherwise, we could just say that, of course, still one. I mean, it's natural. Mm -hmm. Yes, Carol. I think sometimes when you when you narrow down or put a specific topic in one of the headings, then when I come to do an evaluation, sometimes you see people try to just throw in. Uh, internet fragmentation, even though it's because it's only because it's part of the heading. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if you put it part of the heading, it, you you then give that um, proposal a lower score because they're not following the topic. But if you put internet fragmentation within the blurb and say, hey, this is what we're talking about, then you, you give people options. And then you don't think, well, this this doesn't have anything to do with, with um, internet fragmentation. I'm not gonna give it a good score. Yeah. See if there's any other, Bruna. I'm just a little bit concerned about the fragmentation being guinea pigged in this discussion because last year we had human rights and access two very complex topics, two very hard to analyze and um, go through the workshop proposals. I don't think there was this problem that whether us to add uh, one of the submissions that didn't talk necessarily about human rights aspect on 
um, ensuring access to, I mean, to people in South America would be downgraded because it didn't talk about the human rights aspect. And I know it's well more connected. What I'm saying is that by the narrative we adopted last year, fragmentation was very much a topic at the IGF. Not just at the IGF, but, but by the community. We had way too many submissions on the US declaration about the internet. We had a lot of submissions about the GDC and a lot of interest from the community into understanding what is the new chat about fragmentation or is it a new one or, or like a, a past one? And above that, above all of that, like the GDC brings in a lot of the fragmentation discussions and not just that the PNIF had a small subset of a debate about the fragmentation of internet governance process. So I'm not just talking about PNIF here. I don't talk on behalf of the PNIF, but in my mind, it just makes sense to have some, some extent about cooperation and governance and avoiding fragmentation because it's kind of a, a premise to this space. I fully understand what you're saying. And, but my point is that if we're having a discussion, we're trying to come to a consensus. And from what I'm hearing, is that there's only one person or two people who are pushing for a point and the other 40 are not, then it seems to me that there is a rough consensus there. And, um, and the rough consensus is that we don't all have to agree, but we also take a step back to say, okay, fine, I have, the most important part of it is that you've had your say, you've had a chance to win the people over to, uh, but if that's not what I'm hearing, uh, if that's not what we are seeing, then we should keep it like that. Um, I, I mean, that's the whole point. I mean, I do understand that, yes, the way that you're feeling um, or, or what you're saying to us. Mm -hmm. Um, if there's, is that, I mean, I'm also referring to my chairs as well. That, yeah, I mean, they agree with me as well. So we will keep it at that. You will have a chance to revisit it again, as I said, in June, there is a chance to revisit that as well. Would that be okay with you? I think it's okay. I just think we don't fully agree. I think you're, I mean, the way to put as just as a sole position on this, I don't think it's necessarily fair, but I'm okay with that. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna die. It's gonna be okay. But I mean, it's just that fragmentation was a relevant topic and it's a little strange that we're forgetting about it. So we understand. Okay, so this is what we're going to keep as the themes as a way to structure the input, the proposals, structure the um, schedule, and also help us structure the outputs. There's going to be a chance for revision in June. Oh, not June anymore, but in um, our proposed date, which is, I think is our next, is 10 of July, which I want to ask for your input if that's okay, because since June is um quite full now so i'm going to give it a six count to see if there are any objections to that not not the dates but uh keeping this form as how i explained it online none so okay okay so we will carry that and then our next, uh, oh, what is our next item actually? Uh, yes, we do have um, Giacomo on. Uh, he's waiting to give input on the uh, PNMA. So we've got two options. We can go for lunch and then we can come back and do the uh, PMNA and also uh, decide on wow, the dates for the next meeting. Would that be okay? And then hopefully 
um, as I know that people have to travel, they have to move. Uh, we can break early instead of breaking at six o'clock. We can break early. But first of all, we do know that the um, co-chair has to leave. So I would just ask Mr. Ida if he has any parting words for us before he leaves and also thank him very much for coming here. He's also doing the G7 um, coordination as well. And it's a long flight from Japan and he has to go back um, to carry on his work. And we're very grateful that he made the time and effort to come. Yeah, uh, thank you very much for the very kind words. And uh, uh, thank you all uh, very much for this uh, very active and uh, uh, insightful discussion. Uh, actually, to be honest, I learned a lot from the discussion this morning and uh, over the last two days. Uh, uh, especially the discussion on the main theme and also the sub theme, uh, quite uh, uh, inspiring and uh, uh, informative. So I, I hope uh, we can share uh, the information and also the passion uh, uh, here uh, with uh, our colleagues uh, at G7, and we try to find some. Uh, some uh, uh, visible uh, ways uh, for coordination or synergy making or more, more further collaboration between uh, different frameworks uh, after uh, Kyoto uh, IGF this year. So thank you very much for, for the meeting and please stay in touch and please uh, do not hesitate uh, contacting me directly if you have anything to input and thank you very much for the uh, and I wish you a successful afternoon discussion too. Thank you. So how long a lunch break do you need? Uh, shall we come back at three? 3.30? 3. Okay, we'll come back at 3 then. Thank you. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. Um, let me take it down as well. Uh, can we please take our seats, please? Thank you very much, and welcome to the um, final session of the MAG meeting, the two-day MAG meeting that we're having. Um, I won't say much. I'll just hand it over to our chair and um, to start. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I hope you all enjoyed the last segment before our little break. I think it's indicative of the uh, importance that people place on MAG and place on the, the uh, IGF as a whole. And if you think about IGF from the beginning to where we are now, IGFs become sort of the preeminent platform for discussion of internet policy issues. And the discussion that we just had really indicated how much passion there is for the work. At the same time, uh, we can have passion that we can channel to to a wide range of objectives. And I'm not sure that we've ground out all the way on that last policy point before the break. And so I wanted to give the 
the assembled people here now an opportunity to do take one more bite at the apple of that um, issue and see if we can't find a way to be a little bit more accommodating to everyone and and uh, leave with that as an accomplishment today. Uh, and if nobody wants to say anything, that's fine. We can just close it off. But I got the strong sense that there wasn't really um, what you could call consensus there. So uh, before we move on to any other topics, is there anybody who would like to proceed and have a little more discussion focused on trying to come to a, a collegial agreement? Chris. Thanks, Paul. Um, I, I'm not sure I'll get us closer to where we need to be, um, but I do think what struck me thinking about it over lunch is I, there seem to be two parallel discussions here or two different different issues that we're conflating, one of which is what is the purpose of the themes? What do, what do we intend these themes to do? And the other is what is what is the language of the themes? What is included in them? Um, and I think if we don't have a clear sense of the first point, and I think, and I'm not sure we do, but I think we seem to see to have at least some competing ideas about what the themes should do in terms of the IGF, uh, then it makes discussion of the second point uh, a little bit moot. Um, but yeah, we're either trying to combine things and come up with very concise language, or we're just saying we're happy with lots and we can, but but where we end up on that kind of depends on a common agreement on what the themes are for. Um, yeah, so I mean, I, I have my own views, I think, on what the themes are for, and I think I probably am in the camp that tends toward there can be many themes and we sort of use them primarily in relation to messages, we decouple them from the main sessions a little bit. Um, so we don't say every every theme has to have a main session, but I'm not um, the definitive voice on that. I'm, I'm, I'm not even definitively sure of that myself. I think I can also see value in saying we condense to a, a few themes that really reflect our MAG collective understanding of what the priorities for this year should be um, and try and keep a very sort of focused event yeah but, I, but as i say i tend towards the other direction but um i'll leave it there thanks thanks chris and joyce thanks very much paul and um thanks everyone for having a nice lunch break um although a fast one i like to also support what Chris has said that you know maybe it's good that the mag this year has a very clear idea of what the sub themes are for and how we're treating them. Um, in past years, the exercise has always been to try and streamline it, and the purpose of the sub themes were really just to let people know what the main focus areas were for that year. So that was the thinking behind it. But I think this year seems to be very different. Um, our approach is more to help people know where to submit their proposals. Seems that that is the direction that we're heading towards, which again, different from past years. And so the Mac has to understand this is, this is different, right? We're taking a different approach and we have to be okay with it because then we are setting a, a precedence that next year's Mac will have to deal with. Um, and then next year's mag has to understand how we arrived here because we will definitely get questions like oh why is it this year we have so many themes does that mean that there's it's an unfocused igf we have to be able to defend ourselves and to answer those questions long story short i was trying to end with an action point i do have a concrete suggestion which is if we feel that the subtracts don't capture some topics that we feel are important to put in what we could do is get a bit creative we could have the subtracts and typically we would have a description of that subtract or that theme the sub theme but this time around we could maybe put in some buzzwords to clarify like within this theme these are some of the topics or subtopics you could think about 
and then you know where to find yourself. So we talked a lot about internet fragmentation. Um, I don't know the feeling of this room. Do you, do you think it's important to have it as a special sub, um, subtract or a category along with the rest of the list? Or maybe if you don't see that it is as crucial or as high level as the ones that we have now, we could put internet fragmentation or fragmentation as like um, one of the topic words that describes one of the tracks. That, that could be another way of doing it. Just trying to find a, a compromise. Thank you. I'll just remind everybody about last year's subtext. And they were chosen carefully to align language with the GTC. And in that sense, they were both restricting and um, also at the same time opening because they helped to create the alignment across systems. And in, in an analogous way, it's possible that choosing the basket of, of words distributed in various ways um, this year can serve the same function in terms of creating a broader alignment that last year's texts um, produced. Anyways, you just, you can have some that to think about and we have Giacomo online. Giacomo, no? Thank you, Chair. Can you hear me? Yes, can now. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you for giving me the floor. It's not ideal to and to come back to the issues that's been uh, so far from the discussion where we are now, but uh, I think that is important anyway to reflect also on intersessional activities that um, are going on. As you know, I'm co-chair of the group on uh, public uh, public network. Um, uh, <laughs> Uh, meaningful access, sorry. Uh, and we have uh, presented the plan that has been approved by you, and now we are ready to go to for implementation. In this plan, as you know, we have uh, mentioned uh, that um, we, we want to implement the activity and the cooperation with the leadership panel in order to try to promote some of the solution and the best practice that have been identified last year. Uh, I'm glad that um, on the day one, Windsurf confirmed that uh, the availability of the leadership panel in promoting so. We identified a certain number of actions that are taking place across some international organization uh, and the UN agencies that are, that are going on in, in the good direction. And so it would be good to spread these examples and best practice uh, across all the various organizations. In particular, we um, underline the fact that it's important to try to establish cooperation with the regional organization, um, like the African Union and the Latin American Union and the European Union, in order to try to bring to the attention of the various regional uh, partners, what is possible to do according to the best practice we have identified. Um, the, 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 there is a, an important element that uh, we need to we need to put in place as soon as possible, and is the the support of the secretariat. Uh, the sooner we will be sure about who will support us, the sooner we can start with the action, and so. This is my personal recommendation and request to to you to try to urge and to speed this process. And uh, as soon as we are ready to start, we will uh, send a call that we will ask the MAG to distribute across the members and across all the IGF constituencies in order to see if we can get on board other people. We have a at the moment around 30 organizations that are cooperating with us on a permanent basis but of course if we can enlarge this 
uh, would be even better. And uh, I see that there are new faces here at the IGF and uh, would be useful if we can get in contact with them and try to get them on board also on the PNMA activities. That's all. I don't want to prolong your uh, activity on that, uh, but I wish that we can start as soon as possible. And this is also the wish of my co-chair, Ms. Nima, that uh, since this year replace Sonia, uh, that was uh, co-chair of last year. Thank you very much. Hey, Chang Tai. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, and thank you, Giacomo, for that update. Um, I just wanted to um, to say, uh, first of all, on the consultant, uh, yes, we've um, started processing that. It may take a couple of weeks or up to a month uh, before the consultant um, is hired. And I hope that the work can be forwarded um, still, but um, we are working on it and uh, hopefully to, we will have the consultant sooner rather than later. Another thing that I just wanted to mention, since you mentioned the leadership panel as well, is that um, in the leadership panel, we there was a discussion on if um, members of the leadership panel could take one track or one issue and be kind of, I don't know what you want to call it, a figurehead, a champion, a uh, proponent of that um, issue or track, for instance, for the youth track. Um, we did have Mega who are saying that he's willing to, to come there as well and lend the, his weight behind it. So also if uh, PNMA is also, you know, it, it is quite essential and um, with, without meaningful access, you cannot act, um, do anything on the internet and you cannot be involved in the um, internet governance um, debate effectively. So we could also ask them if there would be somebody who wanted to come and then they wait behind your activities. So, I mean, it's not full time, but, the, um, Part of the reason was that if they're holding press conferences, since it's there, yep. that they have decided to champion that track, they could also speak on it specifically. Yeah. I hope I'm making myself understood. Yeah. You know, you had a hand up. Well, it was about the previous subject. I mean, the 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 thematics and. But not on that. Well, I will say it anyway. I, I'm a, as you know, I, I'm, I'm a new member. The a quality that will be, I will be losing in a few hours. I mean, being a new MAG member. But um, from that optics, I will say, I will suggest that at some point, not now, we have, we may work on having procedures and agreements on writing, because for instance, when we were discussing the thematics um, seven, five, whatever, I didn't know the implications that, for instance, Joyce mentioned about the, the amount of uh, uh, proposals or the, or the groups that would be uh, 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 made up within the MAC to, in order to evaluate all these proposals. On the other hand, I was looking I think it is good that we have so many open uh, possibilities for uh, people to propose and, and they will feel uh, my proposal is there in this category or this topic and so on. So I was looking at it as a good thing to have seven, eight or more, uh, but I didn't know the implications. I still don't know because I haven't worked on that. But um, if what I'm saying, if we have we should have at some point, or the rule that a MAG member should not should or should not be part of a panel or a, 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 a workshop or whatever, um, or in what conditions. So I think that for some some time in the future, maybe it will be a good thing to have that on writing, all of those, so new members can read and can be inducted into the, the process current process of the mark, and if uh, somebody wants to change it, 
okay, that's that's fine, but we have something to work on. That's my point. I, I want to make that point. Thank you. Thank um, you. Sounds like you're looking for something like an onboarding kit, right? That's a great idea. Um, actually, I think that is a great idea. And I think also it would be useful for now, since you are a new MAG members, not just you, but if you could go with other new MAG members and just form a small group, and then as you're going through your experience, no, okay, I wish I had this, this, and this, and this, and then we can construct that. I mean, everything is there in writing somewhere. <laughs> it's just that it's not put into one place. But if we follow your experiences, and um, it may be too late for this year, but for the others, then we can always update it as we go along um, from your experience. So that that I think that would be great. Yeah. Does anyone want? <clears throat> does anyone want to take the floor? So I would invite Joyce, Bruna, and Chris to expand a little bit on the issue we left off before lunch just see if we can move a little closer together are we have can we have the i guess themes back on the screen if we're gonna talk through that <laughs> something sorry Thank you, Anya. Um, yeah, I, I, you know, I'm not quite sure where we left or where we can go from there. But I, th I mean, I think there was at least the strong argument to say internet fragmentation remains a key issue and remains something that is being discussed in a policy network. Is still at the center of the global digital compact discussions um and was a very um popular uh thematic track last year in terms of, of workshops that were planned around it um so I, I i certainly think that it seems odd when all of the other um other issues have survived in some form or another into the this year's themes that that would be the one that gets dropped i think that's a um there would be questions about that and i would have questions about that um so it's a question so then the open question i think is um does it sort of do we simply add it as an additional standalone theme sub theme um or do we try and consolidate a little here and include it in one of the others um i think if we're adding it, it's clear that if we're adding more perhaps even if we're at the number that we are now there might need to be some reconsideration of whether these the sub themes reflect or represent the main sessions that we have um and that's that's probably fine but that would be a change from last year and i think something we would need to do deliberately <laughs> um and then yeah the question about what what that means sort of going forward and how how we how we structure it so I, i'm not sure if i helped clarify things there but maybe joyce thanks very much to the time paul um and also chris uh i don't really have any strong opinions about whether or not we want to include internet fragmentation as a as a sub theme in the list or we keep the list as is i'm quite happy both ways so i'm just let the mech decide what what is the best way forward i i did already give some other suggestions for if people somehow felt uncomfortable 
um, adding another sub theme to the list, then there are other ways of dealing with it. But if not, happy to see it there as well. Bruna, do you have thoughts? Not anymore. I it was already pointed out that my perception might be a little biased and I might have a conflict with the PNIF. I, I made my points already. I think it's still an important subject. So I'll leave the decision to the MAG in general. So thank you, Paul. Okay. So we've heard a little bit more from Chris and Joyce. Do you, if I just take a temperature of the room, if it's possible to get together on some formulation that includes this fragmentation in this in the uh, theme set. So for a temperature of the room, I'm just going to ask who would find it impossible to agree with putting this in to the popper. Any, anyone who would find that, Carol, you, okay. Um, I don't know if it would be helpful for persons to make a decision if we can determine, okay, what is the cause of the um, fragmentation and therefore determine do any of these things line up with um, the internet fragmentation? If not, then yes, we need to put it in because otherwise it's lost. However, if there is a cause and effect with regards to internet fragmentation and any one of these things listed here, then you can make some kind of determination. I don't know if that's helpful or more confusing. Thank you. So, uh, Chris, get your flag up. Yeah, I mean, I think just to that, I, I think one of the really key, the, the, the key outcome of the PNIF last year was a sort of cataloging of what fragmentation means to different people and identifying that actually it's a really diverse um, thing. So I don't, I don't see it sort of happily sitting in any of those themes. Um, and that that's why I think, yeah, it, it, either you sort of think of it as a sort of cross-cutting thing, as obviously fragmentation is bad, but again, that sort of has a tendency to get lost. So I think um, that's that's why I would come down on wanting to see it there in, in a sort of specific and separate point. Thank you. So I asked if there was anyone new would find it impossible to accept in incorporating the topic back in. And I haven't seen any it's impossible flags yet. Vote. Well, don't really have a say here about the Nazis, but there are some topics in there that are already intersessional work. And everything that could be discussed in workshops could be discussed the whole year. So perhaps it is then a case of making the outcome a little bit more important at the IGF and not just a one and a half hour session, but something that is broadcasted huge. Because if it works, the intersessional work, you have everything you need, including recommendations, best practices, etc. So if you advocate them in the right way at the IGF, you don't need 10 workshops. But the same goes for cybersecurity and the same goes for artificial intelligence. But that's just my short opinion. Thank you. So thank you for that. And actually, I, I can appreciate it. Um, I think that that's something that we could talk about in relation to what happens after this year, given where we are. Um, but to actually have in the hopper um, a plan to have that discussion towards the end of the stock taking at the at the end of the next session. Um, Chris. 
sorry, and I, I, I don't take the floor to speak for myself, but just to note that there's some discussion in the Zoom chat, um, which I think is relevant and, and has several MAG members involved too, um, about the, adding the fragmentation item to the global digital governance and cooperation point, which seems to have some support. So that that's certainly something I could live with, um, but I wanted to point to that. And also Jorge has his hand up in the Zoom. Okay. Well, Jorge, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Actually, Chris uh, just mentioned what I was intending to say. Uh, Andriette has proposed a very useful language in uh, just saying uh, global internet governance for a unified unfragmented internet. So a wording like that in the in the sub theme could I think uh, solve uh, this discussion and uh, have uh, everybody on board. Thank you. Can you repeat please what the formulation is? Uh, it says global internet governance for a unified, unfragmented internet. Thank you. Chris. I, I, I like the effort, but I, I think we did talk yesterday about the um, using, uh, having internet governance as one of the themes for an internet governance forum. Um, so, I mean, I, I would probably think sticking to that sort of um, uh, nomenclature of digital cooperation, which the UN seems to have, have adopted in relation to all of the issues like WISIS plus 20, et cetera, um, makes a little bit more sense here and would be less problematic for those who, who spoke against it yesterday, but might not be here today. Again, that would parallel our efforts last year to mine text. I, I think, I mean, I think one of the points in having that global digital governance and cooperation theme was to try and make a space in the in the sort of thematic structure to align or to at least to, to allow um, engagement with those UN processes. So yeah, that would be relatively explicit in in making that connection. Anyone else have comments or thoughts? Or tightly held views? If not, what I'd like to ask is, Chris, if you would formulate an ask, we can just test here in the room. Well, I think Henriette actually has provided the global digital governance and cooperation for an unfragmented internet. Um, I would be happy enough with that. I think it's it's a elegant enough um, structure, so I'm happy to put that out and see if people feel how people feel about that. Okay. Elisa, thank you, Paul. Um, I, I like the theme, but then it it really stands out to, towards all the other ones. So this is like almost a full sentence. Um, and the others are like data governance and trust. So it 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 becomes odd in comparison to the others. That's and I don't have an alternative now. So but just to point that out okay. before we say yes. So, Joyce. Thanks, Paul. Um, and yes, I support Elisa. I think it has read, you know, when we play the game, what's the odd one out? Very clearly, that's the odd one out. Um, um actually. I don't really hear any opposition in the room for having internet fragmentation as a separate sub theme. Um, I, I'm of the view that it doesn't exactly fit into the digital governance and cooperation portion because that's about processes and you know other things that we're talking about. But then internet fragmentation is more than just processes. It's about the technical layer, it's about infrastructure, it's about all the, those different things that go into fragmentation. And so if we're not really hearing strong opposition for having internet fragmentation as a sub-theme, I think we should just put it in. I mean, unless 
people feel strongly that we should not have eight, we should only stick with seven. Otherwise, I think we can just move forward with having internet fragmentation as a sub theme. So thank you. I think it's, um, it's something that would be nice to get support for. So a question for the assembly here is who can support this idea? One, two, yes, hands up. Hold I for you. Okay. That that looks to be like more than half the room. Um, and so what I'd like I would like to do, I just want to make sure that I'm uh, taking everyone into account and everybody's had their opportunity to be heard. I would like to be able to move that we incorporate the language, something like along the language that we've just heard um, and incorporate fra fragmentation as its own subject line. Do I hear any opposition? Uh, yeah, Alisa. Should we, in that case, do avoid internet fragmentation? Because otherwise, it might read as if we're propagating it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would, uh, I would ask that there'd be a little trust placed in the secretariat to do a little uh, special wordsmithing to make sure that we don't have that result. But can everybody live with that? So I'm seeing nobody saying no. So we'll just assume that that means we've said yes and direct the secretary that it's appropriate to help with language. Okay. Everybody okay with that? Good deal. Okay. We we're getting close to the end of this marathon. Uh, and I want to make sure that everybody who needs a chance to be heard gets to be heard. So there's an opportunity, open mic, um, for anybody who wants to add an intervention on any of the topics that we've had over the last few days. Now, just as suggestion, uh, the Japanese delegation ordered the substance in alphabetic order. So probably avoiding internet fragmentation should be the second place. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. Anyone else who would like to say, Brina? Just for us to decide what's gonna be the process for the selection of the main sessions. Um, I understand the concern of not adding fragmentation before was because we had two sessions about fragmentation last year. And I mean, I don't think that's something that's gonna be insisted on. We can just follow through with the PNIF session as the place for discussing internet fragmentation, um, if that's the community consensus, but it would be good to have a process for discussing what will be the themes for the main sessions because we opted for a different approach this year. So, and when, when should we decide there are the team, what are the themes? That's great. What proposal would you like to make? I don't have any proposals. I'm just concerned. I mean, we have the one on processes already that's agreed upon, I hope. Um, but my, my problem is that we also have a few cross-cutting issues and topics that were discussed. So I don't know if maybe on the next month, like we as the MAG should work on lists or possible subjects for the main sessions and then start like with a proper timeline moving on from there. But um, there should be more than just what's listed on the sub theme and that's not the approach we're taking. So, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Joyce. Thanks, Paul. Um, and thanks, Bruno, for bringing up 
that you know now we do have a process process or procedural um issue in in which we need to built in now how we're going to formulate the main sessions um i'm actually thinking in this case perhaps we would have to take guidance then less from the sub themes because they're just buckets but more from the overarching theme so perhaps we could tell ourselves just a suggestion maybe two or three main sessions and it doesn't have to be the same sub theme names that we see in the list but just theme thematic topics or it could even be like a short phrase or sentence that speaks to the overarching theme if that makes sense so yes thank you i think that's a good suggestion other ideas chris just, I mean, it would be useful to get, and perhaps the secretariat can provide um, the number of main sessions we have available, the number of, or how it's expected that they'll be used. So, how many are free, basically, um, and what, 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 to what use they'll be, um, they'll be put. Um, because I'm assuming, uh, for instance, I mean, discussions, as Bruno was saying about um, the incessional platforms and, and initiatives um are they each getting a main session as happened <laughs> last year um or are we going to do that a little differently i guess it sounds like we might with the pnif um what does that mean for other intersessional activities um so yeah i i think at this point still we, we perhaps don't have all of the information to start yeah deciding i'd like uh, three or four sounds like a very small number of main sessions that are not already accounted for. Um, but maybe that's that's where we're at. Yeah. I mean, for the main sessions, I mean, we can look at the room. We have one room which has the um, interpretation. So are, are we having, of course, it also depends on the timing. Are we having two sessions per day? we have to cross off the opening and closing session and also the open mic session um and that brings us to how much <laughs> yeah uh so that that's easily um calculated and we also have to agree how long these main sessions are again what we've done in the past doesn't mean that we have to repeat it for this year we can also reconfigure um, as for the whether the other sessions get a main session, I mean, that's up to the MAG as well. So um, what I would suggest is you can take it off from the um, last year's schedule. It's not going to change because the hours are standard and the timings are standard. It's just that we have to be careful that the, the breaks, the, like the lunch break has to be kept and the opening and closing. Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, just to remind us that we wanted to have a placeholder for the process, processes session. So if we're going to have it, I think it should be like a, a main session as well. Other thoughts, concerns, newsworthiness? Elisa. Thank you. Um, I know it's been a main session, or I think it has been a main session before uh, on on sustainability and um, green internet, something like that. Um, I th I still think that that that's uh, such an important topic that I that that it should be a main session. But um, what I'm also um, wary of is calling out for different types of sessions and um we do need the expertise around us as well to to organize something so um i'm not an expert on on sustainability or sustainable internet and is there anyone on the mag here who who is who does have this um knowledge for example so i can say like 10 different topics i find really important and and like to have a main session on but it, it, we do need people who who also 
have the expertise or have the context um, to make sure that there will be a really good main session. Um, and yeah, that's what I'm... Uh, yeah. Could I make a suggestion that all of the MAG members, after we leave here, they try draw for themselves <clears throat> the capabilities that they have that we don't necessarily know about each other. And so that we can have a little catalog of MAG members who are interested in helping with A, B, C, or D, whatever it is, um, should be a light lift to actually produce produce that. And it should should help out with avoiding unwanted and um, unproductive conversations. So, but that that would put a slight burden on everybody to to identify their special thing or things that they'd like to participate in or have expertise in. So my question is, would you all be willing to do that for each other? Anybody saying no? So we're going to have a nice collegial group of people sharing common agendas. That's good. Okay. Anyone else have any anything you'd like to say? They'd like to get off their chest. Would like to say for the good of the order. Vote. Yes. Uh, thank you, Paul. Valtenatis observer. Um, what I want to mention finally on Drama Coalitions that Mark has mentioned this morning that we had a list of the potential outcomes of the foreseen outcomes for 2023 at the IGF that has been shared with the Secretariat and that will be shared with, uh, with the MAC list. And as you will see, it, it is an impressive list of intersessional work that these dynamic coalitions are working on in all through the year. And hopefully that will lead to, to some more recognition on the outcomes and some more integration in the programs like we discussed. And I've heard a lot of recognition in the in the past three days. So I thank you, all MAC members, for those warm words on Dynamic Coalitions on behalf of all my colleagues. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm cognizant of the fact that we're running out of time. In terms of what we can accomplish, I want to make sure that we we hit everything that we need to hit. So, is there anybody who has a presentation they like to make, hasn't made it yet? Any data? Any ideas about how to do programming? Anything that rises to the top of your urgency queue that you need to get off? Yes, Bruna. Not sure if the IGF necessarily the place, but considering the GDC co-facilitators will be at the IGF, it would be interesting for us to consider having a, like a fireside chat or some sort of a like small conversation, like more informal conversation between them and maybe the tech envoy or somebody moderating this conversation just so they could inform the community about the process. It doesn't need to be a main session, it can be just a fireside one more focus on the GDC process and also use to address some of the questions and doubts by the community. Just a suggestion. Thank you. Other ideas? Just the uh, timing is the next session, but that's the last thing we discussed. Yeah. Joyce. Thanks, Paul. Um, I have a question around now that we have eight sub-themes, although not necessarily tying it to other bits and bobs um, that the MAG is working with, but how would we then organize ourselves when it comes to the evaluation groups, could we just have a very quick discussion around that? Like, 
do we need to combine some groups or should we wait until we see what the demand is like per group and then figure out the best way to organize ourselves? But I think we should at least have some sense of how we're going to go forward from here. Thanks. Okay. That, that sounds like something for a little discussion. Can I just... And go ahead. Um, just to give you some background, and then, of course, we can start the discussion. Um, what usually happens is that we do see what's coming in, and then we make sure, or we try and make sure that um, we can divide the groups equally amongst the MAG members. So we need to have at least, I don't know, four or five MAG members uh, grading one um, workshop. And as far as begging them up is concerned, is depends because um, in some years we've had 90 workshops in one and 20 workshops in the other and 40 in the other. So we keep that one and uh, one group marks that, and then we combine two and one group marks that, or if it's re really huge, we can actually break it up into uh, two groups. So two groups mark that. And so it really depends, but we just want to keep it balanced that um, MAG members would be marking basically the same number of workshops and the assignment is random as well. No. Hmm. Any other conversation on that topic? So then the next item of business is where our next meeting is going to be and what time is going to be. And uh, Chengitai, you're up. So the, uh, thank you, the um, proposal at the moment um, is to have it on the 10th of July. Um, one issue with the 10th of July is, of course, that there is going to be the um, ITU Council meeting. And I don't know if there is, whether it's a plus or a minus. If we have, if we have it in parallel with the council meeting, that means that either some people who are attending the council meeting will come to our meeting, or the other way around, some people who are supposed to come to our meeting will go to the council meeting. Um, I would hesitate to make it uh, because the council meeting is from the 10th until the 21st. Uh, I'm not too sure the meet. So I would hesitate to um, have the second open consultations and meeting after that. So we should either have it at right at the beginning of the 10th. Um, we cannot have it uh, during... Um, the um, the first week of July, because our chair's got other commitments, and um, so we can't have it then. And as we said at the end of June, it's because it's a um, religious holiday, and we try and avoid having that. And then if you're going back, then we have Eurodig, et cetera. So June is basically filled up. So the most likely is the 10th of July. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Anybody foresee a problem for themselves? I, I'm not foreseeing a problem, but it is, I, I, I haven't looked at the, the dates or how it lines up, but with May, end of May, be a possibility. Or are we too late in the piece? Um, let me just check with the, um schedule because we have to make sure that we have enough time for the um workshop proposal phase and also the grading phase uh, if, um, uh to me the earlier the better of course yes
Are we just talking about um, starting during the week of the 10th? Um, yes, I mean, there's the week of the 10th. So okay. one proposal is to start on the Monday. Um, another proposal is to start on the Wednesday. Another proposal we could start on the Tuesday. But I was thinking Monday as a starting point and to see the reason why I said Tuesday is because Monday is also the start of the council. They might have some main events on the Monday but um, I called them up and they said it's the same throughout. So it doesn't really make a difference which day we start um, according to whom I called up in the ITU. So yeah. I'd like to suggest the Wednesday only because it's my country's 50th <laughs> anniversary. So 50 years as golden jubilee, but I understand. No, sorry, the proposal is end of May. Is the date end of May? Just wanted to point out. Please. Uh, thank you, Chair. So if we are Submitting, um, I'm trying to get the schedule. If we have a thing, to, to to put out calls for proposals and how long shall we give people to submit proposals and then we have to look at them, I think, Mace. No, uh, correct, because um, according to the timeline, we have the... Um, the call for proposals runs from 1st of April until 20th of May. And then we, the MAG does need time to grade them. And we need time to tabulate the results. So it would be a bit difficult unless you want to sacrifice some of the time uh, that you would have to grade them um to have it at the end of may and just to check what was the problem with the beginning of july of june it's uh, rights con rights con beginning of june, june is rights con rights con so yeah june is not a yeah so um just checking on my calendar um Sorry. Rights con is from the fifth until the eighth, and then ICON is on the twelfth until the fifteenth. And then we had one open, yeah, one the erotic week, that's the following one, and the twenty-eighth, where we had booked before. So June is not the best one. Yeah, June is not the best month. Thirtieth um, of May to second of June is will just give us a week for the grading and the evaluation. Um, uh, yes. Um, thank you. Um, it, to what extent do workshop um, proposers really need six weeks? Um, could they do with a week less? Um, proposers, again, <laughs> I it's like uh, uh, the time, you know, we've all been to university, the time it takes you to write a term paper, you're given three months, you're given six months, you're still going to do it in the last three days. But um, yeah, uh, that's... Mm -hmm. I, I couldn't have said it better but that's why i'm asking if we would take a week off from them and well um we would also be cutting in our own time obviously because we i think we had three weeks in the initial scheduling um but then we would have it much sooner be able to report back to the community 
which proposals have been honored and um, so they can start make travel plans because the later they'll do that, the more expensive I think also it will be to travel towards Japan. Um, so I'd be inclined to, uh, to go with the end of May um, for that reason. So to be clear, you'd like to take, an, you'd like to take a week off full week off is something I can support. Um, again, again, um, we can do it, no problem. We have always had repeated requests for extensions. And we've actually at times built in the extension time knowing that it's going to be asked this, this, without fail. It's going to be asked. Um, people need to get in contact with panelists. People need the panelists' time to react, etc. Um, just to let you know, but of course we can do whatever the man wants. <laughs> so, given we know that that's human behavior, yes. Um, I guess my suggestion would be that we recognize it's human behavior and take the extra week give ourselves the extra week and and make sure that we do a good job of communicating deadlines and process with with the within the time frame so we can trust the human nature will help us pull the pull the the content in choice thanks Paul and Chengatai, is there a reason that we're not discussing 5th to 7th July? I mean, it's after the 4th of July. I mean, we can do that. Last year, we did have the MAG meeting um, during that weekend. I mean, uh, yes, again, we cannot make it convenient for everybody just the same as when we have a virtual call you know some people will have to get up at 3 a.m so some people may have to miss a national holiday but yeah it's it's up to the consensus yeah yeah and I, i'll i'm happy to live by the consensus or how how do people feel about working on a saturday so six to eight uh we may be okay with it but you know will not be okay with it <laughs> I mean, yes, I mean, we can have it at the beginning of July. That would, but again, I don't want to inconvenience anybody. Um, that's, yeah, it's up to you. That, um, yeah. Could, could we do a doodle poll for a couple of candidates? Well, yes, okay, we can do a doodle poll for uh both dates and uh take into consideration on the first one we know that people are going to ask for more time and we also have to take into consideration that the aim is to get as many people as possible to um submit quality proposals with enough time um so so taking that into consideration, we can do um, the one where we take a week off. We can do the um, end of July, I mean, beginning of July one, and we can also do 10 of July. So three options, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah. Mm, not the end of July. I was, I misspoke. Uh, first week of July and second week of July, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, first week of July is Adha. I mean, it's it's on the twenty eighth. It's probably going to go into the second of uh, of July. So uh, uh, no, we are talking about um, after the fourth of July. Yes. Okay. Uh, just hang on. Let me put my map to that date. Uh, so there's the fourth of July, and then I think the proposal was five to seven of July. So if there's five to seven of July, there is um, 
Yeah, I mean, 5 to 10 of July, I suppose. Or there's the 10th of July. Is that... Just because yesterday, um, I mean, I, I don't have anything against doing on the 5th, but yesterday, Justin pointed out that the fact that the ITU Council is happening on the, the next, the following week, it would be interesting to bring more people to the open consultation. I don't actually know whether it would indeed bring more people, but just wanted to put this on the table for us to consider as well, so. Yes. So you're saying that we have, if we have it five, six, and seven, then people can stay over the weekend and go to the council. No, no the other way around. If we do it on the tenth, the week of the tenth, then we would gather people for the open consultations that would still already be in Geneva for the ITU council. Quick, uh, just a quick point. Um, if we want to actually have people confirming uh, the presence on site, as we discussed yesterday, could also um, take longer, you know, um, during the preparatory process. Uh, and uh, obviously for submitters to have a correct and uh, confirm with speakers, we will actually be able to attend uh, in Kyoto on site. And I'll, I'll also see the 10th of, of July as an opportunity uh, for, for the open consultation to actually bring more people, uh, which will be in Geneva, uh, for the ITU Council. Thanks. Thank you. So we'll take it under advisement for the Secretariat to take care of doing the polling and letting us know what the results are. So there's, uh, sorry, just to reiterate. So we have three options, right? And um, we'll see which one is the best. So the Wednesday, um, five to seven, 10 to 12. And Carol, you were interested in 12 to 14. Okay. <laughs> Just a question. Um, the main concern with the 10th of July is to lose MAG members for the ITU Council? We were saying that it can work both ways. We can either lose or we can gain. Okay, but is there a concrete information that are we losing MAG members to the ITU Council? Um, no. Uh, so probably consult with them, maybe. Okay, well, yes, yeah. I mean, this is a perfect question. Uh, we have the MAG members here. Are there MAG members who are who have to be at the ITU Council? Okay, so we're not going to lose any MAG members. Thank you. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I agree. I, I don't think we would lose any MAG members. I don't want to speak for anyone else, but I look, looking around and I, knowing who's on... Yeah, I don't think so. Um, I think Justin's point was we might gain a few attendees. I also don't think that's too likely, but it might give us an opportunity in the evenings to connect with people from some member states who would be in town, and that's probably a, a net positive. I think the concern with that week of the 10th is it, that it's so late, that yeah. really in terms of identifying, but, I, but I'm not, I still think it's probably our best bet um, and we just need to make sure we move very quickly and really by the end of the week or early the next week, we're able to let workshop propo proposers know that they're in or they're not in um, and people can start booking their travel because that that is a real concern. We're going to be getting very close to the line there. Okay, I think we've we've run out of our agenda business, other than sort of a summary recap. And I know that the secretariat's going to take it to take the time to do a great job of formally recapping everything that we've done here in the last couple of days. But I just want to recognize that the, the decisions about how we manage our conflict of interest and rela relaxing 
a little bit from uh, the past that's that's groundbreaking um the the work we just did here the this last hour regarding the um the the, the sub themes uh, and coming to consensus on that um the overall collegiality of the of the effort for the last two days it's been great and i've certainly appreciated your willingness to collaborate and pay, pay attention to each other's concerns and uh, i want to make sure that everyone here feels that they've gotten what they needed to get out of this meeting and if there's anything that they want to say before we could Go ahead, Lisa. Thank you so much. Um, so uh, I have gotten basically any, everything out of this meeting that I wanted, um, except for um, some nice evening drinks with, um, with the leadership panel, um, or for that matter, with the entire MAG. I think um, I, I would like to propose to... Um, um, to, to see if we could have um, some social event um, at the second open consultation, um, because I think it's good to get to know each other also outside of this meeting room. Um, I have had the opportunity, obviously, to, to uh, have dinner uh, with uh, quite a few of you, but unfortunately not everyone, because um, last minute we couldn't cramp 40 people into uh, to one of these restaurants here. Um, but I think it would be good if, if we would organize something on forehand. Thank you. I agree with that. Peace. Thank you, Paul. I'd like to put a request for a group photo before we leave. Thank you. Group photo. Okay. Choice. Thanks, Paul. And I second both. Um, <laughs> um, I actually some Mac members were asking um, during lunch, um, and I think we're re revisiting the the theme theme issues again, um, around how we're going to deal with cross cutting proposals proposals with cross cutting issues, um, and I think there was also confusion around whether we would be allowing organizers to like tick multiple sub themes if in case they were cross-cutting or would we only allow them to take the one sub theme and we'll deal with it as it comes along that's a great question i could make up an answer now i'm not sure that that's that would serve everybody um my my knee-jerk reaction is that if you see something that's checked every box is probably a problem with it and then act accordingly so other ideas thoughts concerns so just to maybe ask a point of clarification the form itself would only allow one box to be checked right or how does it work the form so we don't get this sort of situation where they try and check as many as possible. Yeah, that's that's uh, something to be determined on the on the forum, um, and I guess we need we need to work with the uh, the team that has been working on strategy for that. Not sure it's the working group strategy, but certainly the working group on on the proposal form. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. I mean, I was part of some of those discussions um, at lunch about yeah, multiple tick boxes or not. Um, I, I think certainly the default is only one, and they've used that sort of to our benefit in in cataloging and and distributing the workshops for. Um, for assessment 
yeah. I'd be, yeah, I think I'd be cautious of, of abandoning that. But yeah, that, that sort of doesn't leave you with much for the cross cutting. But yeah, it's, it's yeah. if we don't have a, a really good solution to it, then I'd, I'd certainly stick with what we have. As with the themes, I think we should just look at it as a process point of view. If somebody selects several, as you were saying, you know, several sub themes, which group is going to market then? Um, you need one group. So um, if we can find a solution to that, then of course, either the primary group that it then will have a primary group and then the subgroups. But what good is that information for us? Is it just going to be going into the description or is it some, will it help in the um, process, the evaluation process, et cetera? Hmm. Right. Just a uh, question as well about the paragraph that describes every single something. Um, are we, how are we working on this? Are we working together with the secretariat to write it? Should the working group um, kickstart um, a draft? Are we doing this together? Also, like, are we taking on Joyce's suggestion of using the, let's say, hashtags or guiding areas for that? Because I, I do believe that it helps. Um, and also to drive back to one earlier um, suggestion that we kind of discussed about having one focused call on explaining to the community what the sub-themes were. So it helps community understand as well what we're talking about, whether uh, a session about um, violence against women fits well into human rights or inclusion or something like that. So just these things, like how are we working on the paragraphs? Are we adding the hashtags? And do we like the idea of doing the call to explain it to community? I think that's a great idea and do some working with the secretariat to, to make sure that we're well connected. Yes, Joyce. Thanks, Paul. Um, and thanks, Bruna. Um, I also want to just support Chris's suggestion. I think just as a way forward, and we can all agree on this, is just to ensure that organizers can only tick the one box. And if we felt in that proposal that it was a cross-cutting issue, then as a working modality, during the evaluation process, when the different groups are presenting on the proposals, et cetera, we could highlight to the other group that's relevant that there is this cross-cutting one and whether they'd also like to have a chance to read that proposal. I think we could just agree to do that sort of informally. Um, that should probably do with it. I don't expect that there would be many cross-cutting proposals anyway, but just in case there are those that come in, we should at least know amongst ourselves how we're going to deal with it. So probably this is the easiest way forward. But I want it to be clear so that, you know, we don't miss out something in the process and then everything gets jumbled up. Thanks. Thank you, uh, Maria Alison, um, observer. Um, although I do, you know, agree with uh, what Joyce and, and, and Chris said, I just want to share uh, um, something that we do in UNESCO is that, uh, you know, we, we a similar process uh, uh, in one of our conferences, we have uh, um, a primary and a secondary choice, you know, so people can mark, you know, select the primary and a secondary, they will go into the primary, but uh, if you don't have enough perhaps proposals or, or good proposals on the first one, you know, uh, um, um, on the second one, then they, then you may shift some uh, into that second session, you know, the, the second preference for, for a session, because that way you, you kind of even out also the number of, 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 uh, of uh, uh, different things that are coming in. And the proponents already know, you know, that they would have a, you know, they, they, their session, you know, their choice may be ending uh, to be the second one, you know, like uh, it gives you know a bit of a. But I agree with you <laughs> that it's it's ideally you know you you have a one clear you know, thing, but uh, sometimes they are cross cutting indeed. Thank you. Uh, quite uh, agree uh, with my colleagues. Um, Sub teams, we have obviously uh, some of them. Uh, but you always have the risk of overlapping teams and obviously cross-cutting issues. 
having the ability to select the secondary team could be interesting. Uh, we do that a lot in uh, academic conferences, um, just to allow for a you know a, a better program smithing, uh, and um, also um, I'd suggest to be very let's say concise with the policy questions. So there is no doubt on the overlaps uh, within the teams um, and between the different uh, subtopics. Uh, obviously, when you are on, for example, human rights uh, uh, issues, you could find overlaps with internet fragmentation in some ways and so on. So having very precise policy questions and maybe a secondary um, subtopics that you could choose would be interesting. And the second point I uh, wanted to, to, to highlight is uh, on the communication side, be very, very quick in actually uh, publishing the, uh, the teams, uh, uh, the same teams uh, uh, for that matter, and the dates uh, uh, just uh, to inform the, the colleagues here, a lot of colleagues wondering when the actual call for proposal will open. And uh, so earlier we could communicate, obviously the better people will start preparing and great proposals. Thank you. Thank you. I think the objective is to get the communications out as fast as possible, as long as they're accurate. And the uh, secretary will work very hard to do that. Thank you, Joyce. Thanks, Paul. Just to uh, quickly react. Um, thanks very much for the great suggestions. I think primary and secondary themes make a lot of sense. Um, would also be helpful in the max work when we are actually doing the organization. And exactly as you said, if we find that one bucket is very heavy or dense, we could then move easily to another bucket. Um, I'm not sure now how the form needs to be changed or re to reflect possibly such a change if the MAC agrees. And then I don't know, Lewis, if you need additional time then to make those changes. If it's very quick and easy, I think we could go forward, perhaps, if there's no strong objection from the MAC. That's what my hope is, that there's no strong objection. And um, I, I think the work so far on the form has been very good. So I'd expect it to not be too much of a lift. Lewis? <laughs> how, how much time would you estimate it for you to put a primary and secondary category to the workshop submission form? And we know that this is just an estimate. So uh, you mean to prepare the, the, the workshop proposal with the with the with the um, new um, uh, with the propositions of the working group? Yes. Yeah, that's around one week should be fine. So no extra time. You don't foresee any extra time as of now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I think that if the, the changes are not big, that's fine. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is shaping up nicely. Anyone else have anything they want to say for the good of the order? Any words from the secretariat before we close the meeting? Uh, just thank you very much for coming here. And I think we had a fruitful th three days and um, We'll see you online. We will continue our virtual meetings. I think that is also very useful. And um, as soon as we get the input from the working, uh, the MAG working group on evaluations, of course, we will start implementing and it will be posted on the um, MAG mailing list. We do have the list of action items, which we will be publishing early next week. Um, so but thank you very much. It's been um, great meeting. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Mm -hmm.
Oh, Chris. Sorry. Um, well, have the last thank, word. Thank, no, I, I'm, not, I'm not looking for the last word, but I will say that this will be my last word, I think. So thank you, everyone. I really think this has been a very productive meeting and apologies for taking so much of the time, but I um, was very, yeah, really enjoyed interacting with everyone. Okay. Um, but what I want to ask, so will, will you also distribute the action points from the leadership panel MAG meeting that we had on Tuesday? Because I think, yeah, that, that was also... Yes. Okay. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And also the poll that we just talked about. Uh, so you'll be getting that early next week. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you to the Secretariat for all the hard work that's gone in here. And with that, we're adjourned. Uh, we, we will have a picture who's over there somewhere. <laughs> or maybe if we can or or I yeah, know, I think this way is the best if we come here then. <laughs>